Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link with whoever you have in your network. Today our topic is very important. Actually, I you know uh, I'm talking about it because yesterday I spoke to someone who was working in Middle East. Uh, working in the Middle East is very uh, popular for many countries, especially when you are from a poor country usually most of those who work in the middle east they are from poor countries and those who they are not from poor countries usually they go to middle east to have a very high let us say paid salary which means a person who is coming from indonesia uh, philippine etc uh, they go and work for a lot a lot less even if they do the same job exactly a western person do if an American he go and to work in Saudi Arabia or in Jordan or in Lebanon or in, in, in Kuwait or all those countries, he will get maybe five, six times more at least than the salary. Someone will do the exact same job who is a Filipino or Indonesian, which means right away you will face a, face a very bad, ugly discrimination starting from the salary. And the discrimination, nothing except that's because you are a Filipino or you are an Indonesian that's all even maybe you are better in doing that job than someone else and this is the truth and the truth always ugly and nobody want to talk about it but the salary is not the only problem uh, you know usually when you are poor and you don't have better options you accept anything I mean, you have a family to feed. So you can't spoil yourself and say, no, I'm not going to accept this. Why you give somebody, he, just because he is from England, you give him a salary which is 10 times more than me, or maybe 20 times more than me. And not only that, you give him a very good accommodation. Uh, Filipino people, they put them in a small, tiny apartment in the shelves in the top of each other. Same for Indian, same for an uh, Indonesian, as if they are not a human. But if you are coming from England or from Belgium or from France, they give you an apartment by your own. And even they provide you, uh, mostly they give you, you know, a like a car. So it's just because you are from a poor country, you are going to be humiliated. And that is the truth. Now, is that the only problem? A person coming from a poor country to work in those countries will face no you see when you are coming from a poor country that's mean your country is not powerful that's mean they can do whatever they want to you and your country can do nothing about it and that will lead us to tons of problems women rape women trafficking sex slavery working without salary not only that anytime the one you are working for him he can stop paying you and he accuse you that you stole from him and they will believe who they will believe you the poor person who is coming from indonesia or a filipino or they will believe a saudi guy who is a local citizen and he is rich for sure even if they knew that he is lying about what he claimed they will take his side me myself I am from the Middle East so I know what I'm talking about and I am been in those countries so I am not really for sure not all of them but most of them so I know what I'm talking about I know what kind of slavery it is the first you know the first thing happened to you if you go to uh, Qatar as an example you can go right now and search Google and see what Qatar is doing for workers who they are building uh, uh, like uh, supposedly Qatar is going to host uh, uh, Olympic, whatever, I, I, like something like that about football, I think, football like uh, uh, game in I think 2020, 21, something like that. And the Indian and the Indonesian and the Filipinos are treated literally as a slave. Even they did not pay them for the last six months their salary. I mean, imagine Qatar have billions and trillions of dollars yet 
they will not pay you your poor guy your salary it is an open clear slavery for a very simple reason what you can do about it you are from Indonesia your country is not America if an American uh, something like that happened to him he can sue Qatar in USA and that will have a bigger consequence on Qatar as a country so they have to obey and they have to be careful when they play with American but if that is done to you and you are from Philippine what you can do about it nothing what you can what your president can do about it you know I example like I remember uh, a Filipino girl she was murdered uh, uh, I think in Kuwait and her the, 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 the employer he put her in the freezer for I think six months and then the president of the Philippines he screamed he complained but what, what he what he did nothing I mean literally nothing it's just uh, it just for inside indoor uh, uh, like I say uh, to cool the population down but what he did nothing and then now Filipina girls are sent to Kuwait so your leaders don't care for you your government don't care for you nobody protect you and you are not from a strong nationality sadly this is how the world is today and yet you want to go and work in those countries you are making a big mistake the second you go to those countries you have to put in your mind that they can accuse you of anything and a little tiny excuse can cause you your life as an example here they accuse two Indonesian maids to do witchcraft for their honor oh sorry I just say owner because this is slavery uh, for their employer but the fact he is their owner he owned them so he got angry from you he accused you of witchcraft and that's it witchcraft the penalty is death you believe it he just accused you they will believe who you say no I did not they don't care a little accusation can end with your death Many years ago, more than a thousand and two hundred Indonesian girls were went killed and went missing. So Indonesia decided to block sending females to Saudi Arabia. But what Indonesia did? Still nothing. What happened? Who? Where is the? Where is those uh, one thousand two hundred female were killed? Where is the killer? Have you ever heard in a, in a, in, a, in a world? That there is one hundred twenty thousand or two, two, uh, one thousand two hundred a crime happened, and we could not find one killer, because all what they need to do, they rape you, then they kill you, then they dump you in the desert, and then they report to the police that you run away with their money. So now you are the victim. You, you are the criminal, not the victim. Now you are killed, you are dead, you are buried in nowhere. Nobody knows about you, and nobody will find you again. And if they find you, they will find your bones. And now, in, your, in the record, you are a thief. All of this is coming from the Quran because the Quran says it clearly that Allah He made it lawful for Muhammadan to have abused for their slaves. You know, the Muslim they say, do you know that the first one who called for Allahu Akbar was Bilal, the slave? The question was, supposedly. Uh, is Islam treating the slave good? Hmm. Well, if Islam treating the slave good, why Bilal was the first one to be called to call for the Adhan? Because he was a slave. The white Arab man, he is not going to wake up 4.30 a.m. in the morning to scream loud without a microphone at that time. So this is a job for a slave. That alone is humiliation. And why Muhammad he did not free the slave why he have slaves so they force you they destroy your life imagine here in this article I'm reading which is not really new for me uh, Indonesian girls before they send them to the Middle East 
they tell them we want to give you a shot and this shot supports you to be strong and later they find that the shot is to keep to to keep you uh, 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 like uh, having your period running or let us say you will not be able to carry a child in case you might have sex when you go there in Saudi Arabia which means they are preparing you to be raped when you arrive to Saudi Arabia and you don't you cannot cause them a problem because the only way you can prove a rape in such a country if you came there and you have a baby and then they can check the baby DNA and they will find who is he but if a man he rape you and he jail you inside his house for a few days after the rape then all the evidence is gone because there's no DNA can be found so the the the, the uh, employment agencies are working to make money out of your rape maybe they are from your country but trust me they will use you and they will abuse you to make money out of you and they prepare you to be the victim for the employer and by the way this doesn't matter if you are an Indonesian Christian or a Muslim they don't care because according to the Quran the Quran says whatever you own and your right hand possess it's lawful for you and when you work for him as a maid that's it if you remember the Quran says Force, force not your maid to do prostitution unless, you know, unless they uh, agree. Chapter 24, verse number 33. So if you have a maid and you are going to work there as a maid, hmm? do you see it, people? If you are going to work there as a maid, you are equal to the slave. This is Quran. Force not your maids for prostitution when they desire chastity. And if you force them, Allah is all merciful. So not only they can rape you, they can force you to do prostitution. And if the women she go there, and this is why always they choose young, you know, the second you see the employer looking for a young female, you should know that there's something fishy. What they do, they send pictures, those agencies, evil agencies, for sure not all of them are evil, but generally speaking, they send uh, pictures for young females, the, the, the new employer, let's say the owner in, the, in, the, in, the, in today world of slavery, they send pictures of young females from Indonesia, from Philippines, etc. And then this Saudi, Emirati, Bahraini, Kuwaiti, etc. This Bedouin man who never have, you know, I mean, this is new money coming to their hands. Uh, he chose the best of them based on her beauty. He don't even know how to read your resume. Most of them, they don't even speak English. And big, you know, based on your look, he hire you. And we know what the job is going to be. So when you come home, the first thing they will do, they will take your passport from you. Your passport will be taken from you and you will become hostages. You cannot leave the house. You cannot go in the city. You cannot go downtown. All everything, you are a maid. You cannot leave the house without permission of your employer. So you are totally a property of his own. And then he start harassing you. Especially if you are a hard cookie, which means you are not easy to go to bed. So if you don't want to go to bed, he start pushing hard and hard. And if he give up, he might accuse you of a theft or a crime. And you end finding yourself in jail for many, many years to come. If not, you end in the death row in Saudi Arabia. Accusing women of doing witchcraft which is no proof of it, will lead them to death raw. That is the truth. And you know, somebody is saying, uh, 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 a Muslim saying, a Christian prince is liar. We are showing you this is all, it's all over the internet, Abdul. What we are liar. <laughs> what we are liar. <laughs> lying about what? What about lying about what? Huh? What we are lying about what? I mean, whatever you say to those Muslims, you say they accuse you of being a liar. You show them 
it's in the front of them everybody knows about it it's in the news it's in the United Nation it's a human right website and then they say Christian Prince is a liar they are forced for sex they are forced to work without salary they are forced to do things which is not what they hire to do as an example one of the most famous things will happen to you when you go to the Middle East in the agency let us say uh, they told you the job you will work in a uh, reception in a hotel you go there you find yourself you are going to work as a maid what are you talking about I have a I have a bachelor degree in tourism I am I, I sign a, a, a contract to work as a, a reception in a hotel and I will have my own uh, you know like a housing part of the contract uh, this is what it is it's not up to you it's too late they grab you they put you in the house of the new employer and you are a maid you are a slave in the contract they write down something the job you will do in the ground is something else so why people want to go and work there this is a human right website which is United Nation which is an ugly organization by the way and they cover a lot of the crimes happen against the poor but sometimes they cannot the, 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 the crimes is so big to cover it you know so what you see in their website is not even one percent of the truth and here you see in their website as an example it says in 1962 the King Faisal abolished slavery in Saudi Arabia but this is not true until now there is slaves in Saudi Arabia and nothing changed because Islam never abolished slavery so how the king abolish it and here by the way this is a proven how they lie to us and say Islam was against slavery until the year 1962 in Saudi Arabia legally officially by law there is a slaves 19 62 maybe some of you in that age now and yet they lie to us and you say Islam is against slavery this is more than a thousand and four hundred years after Muhammad and still they own slaves if Saudi Arabia who is a very Islamic they did not abolish slavery until 1962 so what is Islamic then but today the slavery still exists but it have different names Mauritania as an example is the biggest slavery country in the world more than 80 for 80 percent of the population are slaves Arab they own African all those discrimination and human rights violation happen in Saudi Arabia as an example and by the way others are no better but Saudi Arabia we can say it is the most extreme dangerous place to live in and to work in sexual abuse is number one concern violence capturing hostages jail false accusation working with no salary you go there you have a dream I'm going to go to Saudi Arabia I will work there for three years I will come back with some saving to build a little tiny house for my poor family you work there you spend your life making nothing so why anyone wanna go and work there I advise you I know you see I cannot lecture you about where what to do to live I know there is people who they are poor they are desperately trying to find a job you know life is tough life is hard we cannot lecture somebody is poor about what to eat he need to feed his kids but my friend there is many ways God he can provide don't go to those countries don't A Muslim saying why the Bible is saying burn people alive 
so I want you to say I want you to say that this is evil so I can show it to you from your prophet what do you say do you agree do you agree mr. Muhammad if you're a prophet saying burn people alive what you will do are you agreeing that this is uh, uh, evil is that what you are trying to say hello coward show your proof do you like to call me life and I will show you the proof do you like to call me life do you dare to call me life in the front of everybody if I don't show the proof I will I will I will take vacation for the coming three years what do you say do you accept the challenge and if I show you the proof you will leave Islam you can't your parents are sleeping okay wake up your parents and when they wake up let me know or let your daddy call me take care so as you see they try to disturb our topic because it's very embarrassing you speak to a Muslim about anything and anything for a Muslim is offending it's embarrassing you know the point of saying is this is offending that it is embarrassing they speak too much about Islam make us good Saudi Arabia executes Indonesian maid who killed a man attempt to rape her why she was executed is that fair so now we have a poor Indonesian girl and most likely she is a Muslim she working there a Saudi man he tried to rape her she defend herself she pushed him something happened and caused his death and now she is the criminal and she was executed this woman she have to give she should be given a medal of honor for defending her honor why she should be killed but she should be killed because you killed the Muslim number one and he is a free man and you are a slave and that actually is kind of terrorism so if you are a, if you are a maid from Indonesia from Philippines you hear this in news so if your employer which is going to be your owner until you go back home he tried to rape you you will never try to defend yourself because the law will take his side and as you see they execute her and there is by the way some kind of attraction to work in the Middle East and I want to talk about it because yesterday I was speaking to a person who work in the Middle East one of the attraction of working in those countries that you will learn how to, to to be lazy like number top reason to work in the Middle East is to be lazy because those countries everything there goes slow I call it turtle countries it's a turtle land everything is asleep they woke up 9 10 in the morning they work for two hours if we can call it work and then they sleep for the rest of three hours and then after that they wake up to drink some coffee and then they take a nap again and then they wake up around eight and then they do prayer you know and then like the prayer is just to gather themselves and then they start drinking coffee watching tv and you as a foreigner you are serving that's all but it still is a slow country so many people like to work there because yes you are working there yes they are controlling you yes they are abusing you but you learn how to be lazy your employer is lazy so you will be lazy too it's easy income if we can say an income you will not make in your country and you don't do really too much effort to make it but if you are a female trust me is going to come from a very wrong location you will be his sixth slave
as I said, especially if you are coming from Asian countries. Yeah, but what is expenses? I mean, and not only that, you know, you go, I like I, I spoke to many uh, Filipinos as an example. You go and okay, you work for 10 years in Saudi Arabia. Okay, what do you have now? Nothing. What you brought with you? Nothing. So what you did that? I mean, work in your country at least you can, and then you go back to your country. You do not know what to do because you are used to work to to work in a lazy country where everything is lazy. So now it's very hard for you to adopt the situation in your country because you are disconnected. You are disconnected from the, the from the from the business market. From nobody knows about you anymore. You, you know, you do not know what to do. The job you want you can do there, you cannot do there. So you find yourself outdated you earn nothing you collect nothing you save nothing and you waste your life being a foreigner in a land it is not your country is not your language it's not your culture not and maybe you're not your religion so what did you what, what you did to yourself is it possible to raise the topic about Islam versus Christianity in the Middle East my friend there's nothing it's called Islam versus Christianity in the Middle East there's Islam versus Christianity because Christianity is not a Middle Eastern religion. Christianity, Christ is not a Middle Eastern person. He is our Lord. He is for the Asian, for the black, for the white. This is have nothing to do with the Middle East. So there is some attraction to work in those countries because your income it is little, but it is kind of easy, you know. And you learn how to be lazy, but what you can do with this income? Nothing. And most likely, you will not come with anything. Because in Saudi Arabia, as you see, many of them, they are liars. They make you work for a year. Oh, next year, we'll pay you. And I will pay you like today. I will give you uh, this month a uh, $100. But, uh, sir, $100 is not enough for my food. What I will do? Come on, just $100. I will give, what you, before you leave, I'm saving them for you. Huh? I'm saving for you. Your contract to work with me, this is if you are a man. Uh, your contract to work with me for three years. At the end of the three years, I will pay you all one payment, what one check, saving for you. And then at the end of the three years, he says to you, I have no money for you. And what you can do about it, I will tell them I gave you the money. And if you say I did not, I will accuse you of a theft, anything. What you can do about it. <clears throat> there is a video. And my many my my think in other countries can be better. As an example, yeah, what about United Arab Emirates? For for sure, Emirates is better than Saudi Arabia, but it's not too much better. There is a video of uh, the brother of the Prince of Emirates. He was torturing a Pakistani, for he accused him that he stole from him five thousand. Dinar. I know how many dollars that will be. He put nails in his ass. He put salt in his ass. Even he overrun him with his jeep. He shot with his Kalashnikov with his AK-47 between his legs. You can watch the video. It's in YouTube. You are no one. You are nobody. The second you enter there, you are by your own. And by the way, I'm not joking. You can search the video right now. I, I, I wish I can play it for you, but they, they will claim copyright for it. The daughter of the Prince of Dubai, she have a video of her in YouTube. Search for it. He, she and her sister kidnapped and jailed by their father. This is a princess. This is what they call them, princes. If a princess is kidnapped and jailed, who are you? This is his daughter. <laughs> the daughter of the ruler of the country. No, no, she did not run away. She is still in jail. No, she did not run away. Nobody knows what happened to her. That's it. She is gone. I don't think anybody will see her again. Uh, 
so if this is happened to their daughters what will happen to you especially again if you are a female in the top of that not only sexual abuse religion abuse if you are a Christian they will do their best to humiliate you either you accept Islam or else this is why you see many of those who work in the Middle East they convert to Islam in those countries because this is what they do after you go there and you work for a few months they start putting the pressure on you uh, you know the company really now is not really in need and too many people and we are thinking to send you back and you know this is an Islamic country so we favor to keep only those who they are Muslims or they convert to Islam so they are telling you exactly what you need to do in order you want to stay in the job and this poor guy Filipino who borrow a lot of money to come because many of them they cannot afford the ticket you see when you come to work in those country it's not just coming you pay the agency a lot of money you pay you know most of them even they pay for their ticket they have they pay for the insurance uh, they uh, there is a lot of, of things to pay for and he borrow so now he did not save money he did not start working yet and now he have to go back and he was going to pay the money he borrow so what he do he convert all the videos we make they will be deleted so what you need to do guys why you don't learn I mean why it is hard to learn you can go to Patreon or you search for the same exact uh, title in the coming 24 hours. You will find it all over. All my videos, I delete them. All my videos. If I keep my videos, I should have thousands and thousands of my channels. So why you keep complaining why we cannot find it well, this is why i say download the video as soon as we finish and if you are a person who is lazy to download well are you lazy to search for the same title just filter search for the last 24 hour post and you will find it so anyway i really i feel really sad for those poor people who work in those countries don't go there never go there you see, work work as a maid in your country is one million time, and whatever they will give you, you will live. But don't go to those countries. You will be away from your family, from your children, from your husband. They will they will rape you. They will they might even get killed. You might be sent to jail. They can f fabricate any accusation against you any time. You see. Uh, there is a story of a woman and uh, she's a Filipina uh, the husband he was raping the Filipina girl and now the Filipina she that's it she gave up she cannot say no what she would do she tried to contact the embassy she could not you can't even contact your embassy you believe it you cannot go there you can't even open the door of the house so the wife she found out about her that her husband is raping her but for her she wanted for the wife she wanted to just get rid of the Filipina now she knew that the husband is the evil man so look what she did she took her jewelries and she put it in the bedroom of this Filipina the husband came oh, my jewelry is missing you know the husband he said okay let us search for it and she told him why you don't search in the maid room they searched in the maid room they found the jewelry there the husband, because he's raping her, he don't want the police to be involved. He tried to fix it. The wife, she insists. She called her brother. Her brother, he called the police. The Filipina in jail. And God knows when, you know, and they will cut her hand. In Saudi Arabia, they cut your hand for a theft. So she went to jail. She, they will cut her hand and they will send her without hand to her country. For what? So look what happened to this poor woman. She got raped. She got no salary. She humiliated. She been put in jail, and she lost her hand. And now she will come to back to her country, not only without anything. She lost her honor, her dignity. She been humiliated. She been raped. 
and now she is coming missing one hand why you want to do that what in the world is worse to do work in Saudi Arabia all those countries oh those stories are nothing there's more ugly they search the internet search the internet actually there I have a video on my Facebook you can see it about the Filipina she is jailed in her in, in her employer house go and see either you can find a job in a country where you will be respected as a human or never go anywhere do anything in your country anything you know like I mean uh, I don't want to lecture you about how to make living but I think living in Indonesia as a poor person is one million times than living as a poor person in Saudi Arabia because you will be poor anyway you will be the maid of those people savage people will take control of you let me tell you this story this is not about a maid a Saudi man he married a girl she is from Syria they are she is a Muslim the girl she is like 16 17 teenage the guy who married the girl he took her his home in Saudi Arabia he married her in her country then he took her to his country when she arrived to her country to his house she found out that she had to sleep with his father and his two brothers because they share women she tried to escape the house she could not she could not find any way to call anyone there's no phone the door is locked she can see no one nobody can see her three years four years five years she could not meet a person just to tell him what's happening to her finally finally she was able like she you know because they now they trust her more because she became like used to it so she was able to go do shopping and she was able to speak to somebody who worked in a store who is from her country. She gave him a letter, a paper to contact the embassy. The embassy, they contacted somebody, blah, 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 blah. And then finally, she was freed from her husband and the family sexual rape. Family. She's a wife. Imagine the guy, he married her. This is not his mate. No, I don't have a Middle Eastern passport. I have only American passport. I don't want to have any Middle Eastern passport. There's, there's nothing to be proud about. You know, my Middle Eastern passport expired a long time ago. And actually, I don't have it no more. I have, uh, you know, many, many years ago, uh, a bunch of kids, they broke in, so into my house. They thought I have uh, money. And they took a little safe I have, which there's nothing there except papers. And that passport was there. I have like degrees and you know passport, which is that passport. The American passport, it was with me because I was overseas. This is why they break in. I'm American from a long time ago. Anyway, this is not the story. But you see, there's nothing to be proud about, and I'm sharing with you what's happening in my own land with you I'm, I'm not too proud about what's happening there i wish i can fix it but this is how it is and when you are poor nobody really care for you you see uh, i remember once when i was in the middle east we opened the tv and then they say uh, uh, uh like 10 cars they hit each other because there was a storm in uh, los angeles 10 cars okay what what we have with the 10 cars nobody even injured we have more than 70 child they die in a bus they were going in a school trip and not they are not even reported in the government tv as if they are not exist but they have time to report to us that two american they ate they were they were in competition about how much they eat hamburger so this is what's happening if you are from an important citizenship from a country which can protect you then 
you know your situation is different but if you are from a country sadly your government is weak and they cannot stand for you and maybe even they don't care don't go there you are making a big big mistake especially if you are a female especially and the additional risk as i said it's being learning how to be lazy because working there teach you how to be lazy and income is easier than making income in your country so you work there first year second year third year fourth year and then after all the years you work you find yourself you made no money really yes you have better income but you have no money especially like some uh, some people like from some countries like philippines as an example filipino they are very kind people and when they start working they start sending money to their families and they buy gifts christmas gift new year gift birthday gift so a filipino guy he work all year there he come back he's carrying nothing but a bunch of a trash in his back a camera iphone a keyboard what you are wasting your life for this you know what i mean you go overseas stay away from your family you see your family once every two or three years once for a week or two to come back with the camera what this camera will do for you don't go there work in your country work as a taxi driver go and see how much money they are making they make the better learn how to to uh, to uh, like to to ride uh, to drive a uh, heavy uh, duty machines they they get paid uh, learn how to be mechanic you can make good money in your own country why you want to go there you go there you spend your life you waste your life you come back you have nothing and not only that not only that you see when you when you work in a in a foreign country and you are not one of them the language is not the same everything is not the same the culture is not the same you don't enjoy your life and most of those countries even they force you to wear hijab i mean look what happened to you you compromise every valuable thing you have your freedom is gone which is the most important thing a human being he have i mean a human being without his freedom what he have we are like what dogs donkeys the second you lose your freedom you lost everything so you lose everything for what to come back with iphone if you can't go to america well, that's a good deal if you can go to canada that's a good deal if you can't go to australia that's a good deal but you don't go to uh, 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 saudi arabia In America, you can be a citizen, and if your employer abuses you, you can put him in jail in two in five minutes. You see, whatever they speak about the land of the kuffar, the Muslim, they say the land of the kuffar, the land of the kuffar. In America, if you abuse a dog, you go to jail. A dog who have no mouth to talk. I have a neighbor. She left her dog outside in the garden during the rain. That's her crime. She left the dog out in the yard and looked like, I don't know, she was busy with something. And the rain started coming. Somebody reported her. The police came, investigation. She have a court date and she might go to jail for dog abuse. And yet they say America is disgusting. In the Middle East, go and read the stories. You sleep in the street, your employer don't pay you money. He says to you, go and find your way. You know, our man, you know, okay, I brought you here. I don't have money for you to pay you. Go, go, feed yourself. Feed yourself. Hmm? 
Hmm? It was like a dream, like a bad dream, is the way one immigrant worker from the Philippines summed up his experience. This is the human rights website, hrw.org, United Nation. In Saudi Arabia, another worker from Bangladesh told us, I slept many nights beside the road and spent many days without food. It was painful life. I could not explain that life. A woman in a village in India whose son was beheaded following a secret trial. Secret trial? Why it's secret? Beheaded. So really, I feel sad for you know for people who they are from poor countries who are trying to to make living for their family, which is very you know I mean those people are very nice people. They are trying to do something good. They are trying to teach their children, send them to school, feed their family. They are not doing anything wrong, but life, my friend, is full of wolves. And everybody want to take a bite of you. And those countries, human right for them, it doesn't count. It doesn't exist. You are not even a human for them. They speak too much about God, but they have no God. What Jesus said, from their fruits, you shall know them. So I say to you, and I say to you from my heart, it's an advice never ever go and work there and if you are there get out get out before it's too late and additional to that those countries have no future right now there's a lot of problems between Iran and all Middle Eastern countries so any mistake can happen United Arab Emirates can, can go bankrupt Qatar Saudi Arabia, they will go empty. The second war started, all those countries are zero. You saw those, those countries, I call them temporary countries. It's a cartoon countries. It's built of cartoon. They have no base. Their society, their economy have no base. It's just oil and like Emirat, they don't have really any business. I mean, Emirat is just a... Uh, uh, like a big supermarket for shopping and they make money from uh, uh, opening a money laundry uh, uh, for mafia and gang uh, Russian mafia uh, a Persian mafia uh, uh, Arab mafia Egyptian mafia you name it drugs so it's a big country built in nothing it's a balloon when I say big country I mean big name like big building you know there is companies who were selling apartments in Emirates, and there is many stupid people. They put all their life saving there, and now they found that those apartments are not even exist, or most of them they aren't going to be built. It was a scam. You have to be careful about where you invest your future, because remember. Time goes like now people hire you for a job because you are young, but you know how many people are here from from the Philippines? How many people are listening here from the Philippines? Give me one, please, if you are from the Philippines. <clears throat> Do we have some Filipinos here? I think we have many. In the Philippines. If you are an old person, nobody hire you. It's a fact. You believe it? And the stupid government of the Philippines don't protect you, which means legally they can discriminate you by age, by gender. You will see an ad for a job in the Philippines says you have to between to be between the age of 18 and the 25, legally, which is discrimination. So if you are over that age, if you are 30, you will imagine 30 per 30 years old you are still young still you have hard time to find a job the older you get the impossible the mission is
you see those countries always they have a supposed new government and new president and you know they play with their emotion the emotion of the poor and they promise them a lot of things will change but nothing change all of them are gang those you know like governors and leaders they are liars so the poor people they go and vote and they're excited and etc we have a new senators and we he promised us and we have a new president and now he, he, he like this guy he's with the poor and nobody with the poor nobody with the poor when they come you were poor when they leave they are rich and you are still poor so you work in the middle east when you are young because they will not hire you if you are old anyway so you go to the middle east today in dubai to work or in saudi arabia and you are 20 21. you stay there for 10 years you come back to philippines nobody hire you and your saving is nothing so what you would do you establish no business for yourself you establish no job you establish no even retirement nothing you find yourself as if you are just born today starting from zero so i advise everyone from those countries philippines indonesia wherever you are don't go overseas unless it is a country where a human being is respected america canada uh, europe yeah but even not all of europe is the same uh but like those countries you can have a future even you can be a citizen otherwise don't go anywhere stay home stay home and try to do anything you can why not canada canada is a beautiful country what's wrong with canada but it's cold the only problem with canada it's cold but at least nobody will discriminate you anyway uh you know we are not talking about white countries this is not true there's nothing is called white countries actually if you go in, in in those countries you will not find a white country no more you know uh what white country Europe is full of black people, Asian people, Middle Eastern people. Yeah, you can be anything you want, but at least, you know, you have to think about your future. Because if you leave today and you are young, start you working in the Middle East. And then you work there for 10 years and you come with nothing. Especially, you know, there's some naive ones. They don't save or maybe they cannot save because they have duty to do. They have obligation to do they have to keep sending money to their family uh, uh, you know and you know when you work in when you work in the middle east let us say you're a filipino or indonesian person went to work in dubai and because now you're in dubai all your family who they are in indonesia they start sending you please can you i borrow money from you your cousin and the cousin of your cousin and the cousin of your cousin because they think you are a billionaire there but the fact you are just a taxi driver there or maybe a, a, a driver for your boss or even you are a maid so everybody want to borrow money from you and you are a good person you give you know but the, the money you give will never come back to you so you work there you spend your life time goes and you come back home and you have zero and if you are a filipino what do you do this is what filipinos people do i love them very much i love very filipino but there's things that they don't i don't like it they you know a filipino he like to buy a, a brand new iphone i mean why you buy an iphone why a poor person he buy an iPhone? I mean, what's wrong with a normal phone? What iPhone would do? Like, would you want to show off like you have an iPhone? They like to spend their money in stupid things. iPhones, cameras, keyboards, uh, parties, birthday party. You know, like I, I saw I saw Filipinos celebrating birthday party. It cost a lot of money. I mean, what is that? I mean, are you people out of your mind? You are poor. What birthday party and why you are inviting all those people and all this food and so what you fast now for the coming two months you borrow money to make a party like life cannot go without a birthday party so we have a bad habit bad traditions bad thinking involving our decision and destroying our future
yeah expensive wedding you know I if I get married I will not even invite my mother-in-law my wife she like it she don't like it I don't care you know if uh, if her mother-in-law she will pay for her hotel she can come and everyone will come to my wedding have to bring his hummus with him no hummus even hummus no hummus you bring your hummus with you you like it like it you don't like it I mean you are going to get married from this woman that's it okay have fun the money you want to spend in stupid things okay you have fun with it and you you and your wife go somewhere <laughs> I mean you are a poor person have a roof for your house you know uh, tomorrow the rain is coming so you can you know sit down with your wife in a couch and you can enjoy your day so you spend the day now for a stupid party and tomorrow you have no roof and you pay rent All right <clears throat> you know it's not about being cheap it's about being smart you see people they spend a lot of money in a stupid one day night party the dress is a thousand dollar the ring is blah 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 and then you invite all those people and who start gossiping about you why you want to do that nobody will like what you did anyway they would talk about you they would talk about you about your wife about her sister about your brother and they will rip you off after all the money you spent so why you want to do that just take her to the church bring a priest you know uh, 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 Five minutes within, and that's it. Take her in a uh, three cycle and go to the to the beach, like Tarzan. Hmm? Who cares? They will talk about you anyway. There is people who make a who make a wedding cost like a million or two million dollars. Trust me, still people are talking about them today. Why? They say they are cheap. I mean, all the money he have, only he spent one million dollar. It doesn't matter what you do. Nobody will be happy. So why? What's the point of this? Are you getting married or getting or, or, or getting ripped off? What's the purpose of this project? I mean, people get married to have a family. This tradition of having a big party spending too much you can and if people love you but really they can come and enjoy have a party with you without spending anything you know some uh, uh, soft drink and some music okay no problem have fun and we dance but what this is a big hole and expensive dress and the maid they dress like each other and the, there is a there is the hairdresser and the men they have to dress like each other what is that This is this is a tradition of the fool. Foolish. The money you want to spend in the wedding, spend it for your house if you don't have one. Which one is important? If you have a house, get a car. If you don't have a car, okay. If you have a car, what about you spend the money you spend in one month to, to in one night? You can spend it to have a three or four month vacation with your wife having fun in somewhere. But people like to show off, and this is, I, I believe, this is a stupid sign. Stupidity. Right? Like tomorrow, you're, you know, uh, after a few months, your wife should de deliver a child and there is no room for him. What you will say to your child? I borrow a lot of money to marry your mom. Your son, he will say to you, the same as a Christian prince, he said to many, you are a donkey. It was like that when you come first came to America. I, I don't know what do you mean, Mimi. Well, what do you mean when I first came to America? When I came to America, I found America have a lot of American. I'm not sure. The same as in China, there was a lot of Chinese. Yeah, we have to be smart. We have to make a right decision, and you know, and and the future don't you know is not is not merciful for you if you don't prepare yourself for what's coming. If you don't want to have you know uh, like you cannot afford to have a children, don't don't have a children. 
you know you have responsibility so you know I believe you know if if uh, if I'm a person who have a little land in Indonesia I prefer to stay in my land grow some chickens with honor and die in my land better than going and being humiliated in a foreign land and even have a very bad ending how bad oh man oh man is the same as the rest of them the same as the rest but you know like you see the treatment always is different depends who you are so if you are a white person and this is this is the truth I'm just sharing the truth with you if you are a white person European person they treat you a lot nicer from being an Asian person Arab are very very extremely racist that is the truth you know I'm not an Egyptian Egyptian are not Arab <clears throat> So if you go like if you are an Indian go and go and search right now Do you know that in Saudi Arabia you can work there, but you cannot die there a Person who is not a Muslim if he die in Saudi Arabia, he cannot be buried in Saudi Arabia So what will we do now your family? They will pay all their saving the money you made so they can get you back from there You cannot you cannot be buried in Saudi Arabia. It's not allowed They have to ship you out because you are a kafir you are dirty your nudges even death even after you die they discriminate you you have you have no place in this country to die you can work here but you cannot die here if you don't believe me search Google actually let me let me let me search for it Let us see. Maybe we need to search like why and maybe it's, uh, you guys help me to find it. like you can search for like uh, uh, Actually, there's an article. It's, uh, I remember it and I think I made a video about it It says you can work in Saudi Arabia, but you cannot die in Saudi Arabia I need to find it So if you work there and you die there you cannot be buried there because you are an infidel let's see here I hate it when I type and then after I, I type the whole sentence I find myself typing in Arabic when I'm searching English okay uh, non-muslim cannot be buried in Saudi let us see barrier of non-muslim made easy <laughs> this is the article Saudi Arabia welcome foreigners to work but not to die here we go look at this one do you see it Saudi Arabia welcome foreigners to work in nation but not to die don't die here even even in death they have no mercy on you so why you want to work there
you know even if you are you see you know those are racist so what if you are a Muslim you think they would treat you better they would you think they would treat you better if I go to Saudi Arabia because I am white and you are Asian they will they will treat me million times better than you as an Asian Muslim don't fool yourself they are racist to death the same as their prophet you remember when 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 Muhammad he said he promised them that they will have whore what the whore is whore is seeing women who they are so white to the point you can see through you can see through what does that mean it's mean they are so white why Muhammad he promised them women so white what the point because those this is a racist community Arab heaven for them is the heaven of the white people there's no black people there there's no Asian people there so the, their prophet is the same as they are their God is the same as they are it is a racist cult so when he promised them he promised him whore whore is from the word Hawara which is coming from the like uh, uh, the you know the grape the grape like something you can see through it is transparent it's so white to the point transparent if a person is so white you see you can see his his uh, his vein under his skin you will see that the, the, the blood because he's so white so Muhammad here is promising the Muhammadan that in the heaven first of all we show you many reference before if you remember chapter 27 verse number 82 as an example where Allah he will make all non-muslim black and all Muslims white very white and here the package you will receive with those naked women who they are waiting for you they are so white to the point you can see through the marrow of their bones very very racist The wife of ruler of Syria is a white woman. I don't know what does that mean. As if he is a black man. The guy, the ruler of Syria, has, he has blue eyes. Well, what are you talking about? Syria have zero, zero black, zero Asian. They are all white. This is reality. And no, she is not Palestinian. I mean, where, where you guys bring those? You know, where you guys you get your information? Do you eat too much hummus? No, she is not uh, Palestinian. The king of Jordan, his wife, she is Palestinian. Too much cabbage. Anyway. <clears throat> Where is your charming accent from? eBay. This is the God bless America. In America, you can get whatever you want. We have Amazon.com. We have eBay. You can I mean, get one. I mean, come on. This is the only thing I have. You are you, you want to take it from me? Charming accent. It's what is charming about it? It's funny. Oh. For me, you want to buy my accent from eBay? Just send me the money, I will send you my accent. Don't worry. Uh, not only that, I will give you a bonus the accent of Zach and Nike as a bonus. Hmm? And if you ask Zach and Nike about racism, he will say to you, hey, Brother, do you know that in America there used to be a lot of slaves? And the president of America himself telling you to be enslaved. And not long time ago, they have a law to discriminate black people. Mm. Yeah. But in America, the white people is the one who fought to free the slaves. The white themselves. There is a war. White fighting white. This is America, my friend.
so anyway i hope i i did uh, uh i did explain why you should not go and work in those countries you are wasting your time you are wasting your future you have no you have no uh, no you know like i mean you have no future in those countries what you will be there nothing you see if you if you stay in some countries for five years you can apply for the green card citizenship but in those countries they would never be a citizen they would discriminate you always they will look at you down an indian guy who is an engineer i witnessed with my own eyes they send him to buy bread i mean look how humiliating it is the guy is an engineer the boss he said to him go and buy me bread but can he say no i mean this guy is an engineer he's coming to work as an engineer what, what do you mean go and buy me grocery the poor guy what he can do he have to go either he go or he will be fired he will make you a driver he will make you buy grocery he will humiliate you he will ask you to teach his son his son is like the five six years old come come Hey Raja, Raja, come, Raja, Raja, come. I want you to come today after work. You finish work. Now you have another work to teach his kids English. The guy he wants his Arab boy to speak English. So the poor Raja, he work all day as an engineer. Then he do shopping, buying them grocery, buy them bread, and then he drive to drive the women, the wife of the guy, to a different place. And then after that, he have to teach the kids. So you go there to work as an engineer. You end, you are a nurse, you are a grocery guy, you're a driver, and you are, you know, even the guy he want to go with his wife somewhere to visit somebody, they ask you to come and sit with the children. Why do you want to do that to yourself? Right? Be careful, my friend. Life is short, and losing a freedom, nothing equal to it. Freedom is the most priceless thing God He gave you. Those countries, not only you will lose your freedom, you might lose your head. Fed me will call you today. Okay, I can't sleep until Fed you call me. No problem. Canada is too cold. Okay. So what well, they are talking about the global warming these days And you know Canada is getting warmer uh, American they are eating beans and a lot of guys involved So I, be, I predict in the future Canada is going to be like Hawaii So what the global warming is about uh, is it true If a global warming is true that's mean Canada is going to be Hawaii maybe in 10 years There's there's a liberal woman a de Democrat from the Democrat in USA in the Congress, she said, in twelve years the world will end because of be eating beans. I mean, those people are really stupid. I know what? I don't know how the uh, how those people they became Congress people. Eh, just a party support you. Just be stupid, and those uh, liberals they they vote for anyone who's like them. Man, really, the world will end in twelve years if we don't stop uh, driving cars. In twelve years. Why you don't make it 12 months? Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Liberals are very funny. Liber uh, Indonesian love CP. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I love them too. That's why actually I'm, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to focus more and more in Indonesian, Filipinos, Asian. Uh, you know, I really, I have a special uh let us say my heart is so close to those who they are poor i love poor people now for sure you know not all indonesian are poor and not only not all filipinos are poor but we are talking generally poor people are really lovely you know and for sure there's bad people everywhere but the unique thing about poor people in those countries they have a very 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 clean heart they welcome you they give you i mean if, as if they are the rich if you see what they give you what they offer you they act as if they are the rich and they have a lot you see when a when a poor person he give you a dish of food and hardly he can make that dish of food that's mean he gave you a lot 
imagine there's somebody he make uh, let us say uh, ten dollars a day and there's a guy he make a hundred thousand dollars a day and then the guy who will make ten dollars he spent in his day uh, ten dollars he have a guest he spent ten dollars on him and then the guy who make a hundred thousand dollars a day he spent a thousand dollars who spent more the poor the poor spend a lot more he spent everything and poor people always they are giving there's one unique thing about them they give more the rich are cheap more usually not for sure not everybody but usually rich people are cheap this is why they are rich mostly and again not everybody poor people they open their doors for you once in England I you know I was going to visit somebody I knock at the door of a woman I, I don't know who she, I mean the, the it's a dead end there's no numbers in the houses so I don't know uh, I, I don't remember the, the house number two but I know the guy he lived there so I said okay and my phone was dead so I said you know what let me knock at any of those doors those are neighbors at the dead end they will know each other so I knock at the door and I stayed away from the door like I went back like five six steps a woman she opened the door and she said what do you want I said um, is the etc he live here or he's around here you know him she starts screaming at me she want to call the police you know she have a very nice villa I just look at the door I did not ask for food I did not ask for money I did not ask for shelter all what I said where is this guy live are you here coming to harass me? Are you here coming to attack? Are you want to go and attack me? Are you staring at me? Are you looking? And she, like, she is kind of old. So look, I mean, I did ask where the guy live. In the Philippines, wherever you go, you will see how friendly, how beautiful they are. You ask somebody in the street, even they say to you, yes, sir. Very polite. Very loving people, especially the poor people. And I believe uh, Indonesia will be the same. I never been in Indonesia, so I can't really speak much about it. But you are an Arab; you look like a terrorist. Okay, what I can do with my look? I look like a terrorist, so don't marry me. <laughs> what What do you have to do with my look? <laughs> ah, you mean the woman? She was scared. Ah, okay. I got the point here. You got the point. You got the point. I never thought about that. How I missed that thing. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. But I was very polite, you know, and I was away from her door. Like I knock at the door, I, I, I ring the bell, and I stepped away. Almost I am in the street, you know. Uh, and just I asked, I gave her the name. And then the guy, he heard me, he heard her screaming at me. So he came out. He said, Sorry, sorry. It's like, you know, he's coming to visit me, you know. Thank you. She said, tell him next time to knock at the door of people and disturb them. Our time is not for the, for, for people like you. I mean, what? Terrorist, terrorist, not tourist. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I would love actually to go to Indonesia. But, you know, for me, a person like me, if I go to Indonesia, I don't know. I, I don't think I would come back for two reasons. Either I will be kidnapped by Indonesian women to force me to marry her, or I will kidnap by uh, uh, Al Qaeda. So I choose one. Which one is is best? <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, if you look like a Brad Pitt, who is a Brad Pitt? Talk to me in Arabic, man. I don't. Do you think I know the names of? Is that an actor, right? Brad Pitt. You expect me to know who is this guy? Is he? Do he look scary? Let me let me search his name. Actually, actually, I look like an actor, but I forgot his name. Once I was in a restaurant. It's a it's a restaurant, and they have a band, you know. But for me, I was just stopping. I was driving long drive, and I need to to have a break in my driving, and I need to eat something. So I stopped there and then a guy he came and he sat next to me and he said uh, by the way I know who you are 
And in my head, I start saying, okay, this guy, maybe he know I'm Christian Prince. But how he know? You know, I was thinking about something different. So, and then he says to me, but don't don't worry, I will not tell anyone. So I said, okay, thank you. He said, uh, but can you sign this for me? I said, um, sign what? I mean, yeah, like, and he, he started telling me, I have like uh, my children, they will be happy to know that you sign. They always watch you on TV and they watch me in TV. For sure, he is not talking about Christian Prince. Uh, anyway, then I, later I found that he, I cannot give you the name of the actor because uh, the guy, he insists he go and he come back. He insists, you know, he said, can I take a selfie with you? I said, no, you cannot. He said, please, you know, I, I will tell you, I will, I will not. I said, please, no, I cannot take a selfie with you. But the guy, he insists that he, like, he know me and he will not tell anyone. And later I found out he is talking about which actor, but I cannot tell you because then, then you might know how I look like, because really I look like a lot like him. Uh, he's an American actor. Scary. You know, he always take a mafia guy. A criminal, like literally. You know, the guy who do like... Uh, Hitman, <laughs> the bad guy, the bad guy. <laughs> okay. Bert, you guys giving me names. I have no, I never heard of them. Anyway, so the guy he insists, like, I, uh, and I was really, uh, but later I never heard of this name. And later I searched the name he gave me. And I found, like, you, you will not, you know what, like, he is not really far. Very close, but I, I don't look the same really, but maybe because he's in TV and in person, so. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, anyone have any question for us about the topic? Any Muslim here don't believe in what we said? <laughs> Abdul, they want to watch all the movies to to find out which one is what is me. <laughs> That's a good a try, unbelievable. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, what make it confusing about me for the Abdul? That's always I say I'm black, blonde, African American from Japan. So get good luck with that. I mean, how you can find who is that? Black, blonde, African American from Japan. I mean, what is left? Keep trying, you know, keep trying. Uh, we always here we expose Islam and you know, uh, in, but in the same time, there's many, many topics to share. It's important for the community and for people. Uh, you heard that play Madrasat El Musharidin. Yeah, I know this uh, scene. What about it? <clears throat> What's going on with USA and Mexico? Eh, this is politics. There's nothing really important. You see, uh, you know, People they see the appearance of a problems, but they don't see really the problem. What's happening in America? That Democrat they are trying to change the population uh, uh, ratio, because always a new immigrant who come to the country they are given citizenship by the Democrat. A Republican they fought and they fight that. So the more immigrant they come, the more population who vote for Democrat are there. And this is why Democrats are fighting to keep the borders open, not because they love immigration. They are hypocrite liars. It's a dirty garbage game. So people, they come from South America, and they are poor. They want to work. I don't blame them. You know, If you have a system which is broken, people can get in from the border. And not only that, in this country, if you are an immigrant, you can put your children for school for free, health insurance for free. Just sign asylum and you know even even your apartment for free which mean American don't get that me as an American if I don't work I will go homeless but if I am coming as an asylum 
the government have to give me at least for two years housing free food free health insurance if I have children they go to school for free so Democrat they want to have open borders in order to change the the, the geographic population which is going to vote for Democrat as usual and that will make them win always uh, the, the Republican they are thinking about protecting the country in the same time they don't want to change the demographic population it's a dirty game uh, will you debate shake in June I don't know I mean I'm here you see, if 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 somebody want to debate me, do you think he need to tell me I will debate you in 29th of June? I mean, if he's real, he would debate me now. Call me. You know what I mean? They are fake. There's a guy who challenged to debate me from 10 years ago, and he have an article challenged to debate Christian Prince, but he never come. I'm here every day. <laughs> Making an article. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know most of Muslims they try to show off that they are heroes you know like okay I, I want to debate Christian Prince uh, okay yeah true story he, he want to show his four wives that he is a he's a man brother sisters did you see what I did I challenge I made an article challenging Christian Prince and until now he did not respond the coward yeah a Christian Prince is every day is here Sacred City. There's nothing it's called Sacred City. What's Sacred City? This city actually it was Las Vegas in its time. The, the city of Mecca, it was literally Las Vegas, where people they used to go naked, have sex, enjoy their time, 360 guards, and everybody having fun. After Islam, Mecca became an evil city. Yeah, they used to go naked, you know. We can show the reference, you know. People they celebrate going around the Kaaba totally naked. We are not making things up, you know. See, this is the reference in the front of you. The book of Hajj, chapter standing and saying, etc. The most high, blah 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 blah. Uh, Hisham narrated in the blah 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 blah. Okay. That uh, uh, who were Quraysh and their uh, descendant, they go around the Kaaba, the house naked. Do you see the word naked? Do you see the word naked? Naked. It was a sexual entertainment city. Religion based on sex, Islam is based on nothing changed. Islam is still the same as the Arab used to be before, it's a pure sexual city. And then ask yourself why people go around, go around the Kaaba naked. What kind of religion was there where people go naked? And now nothing changed, by the way. Muslim women and Muslim men are not allowed to wear underwear. A Muslim man, if you if you go and watch what Muslim men they wear, they wear a sheet and they are totally naked. So all what it, what it changed that the sheet which you used to wear after they finish, Muhammad he made them wear it during the Hajj. But it's the same thing. The only difference they used to wear nothing. Now they have a sheet, and they show exactly the same as the Hindus. If you look at the Hindus, which 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 shoulder is exposed, how they wear their sheet, how they shave their head, it's exactly as the Muslims. This time, I believe, uh, uh, I mean, the Kaaba thing is inherited from the Hindus. The Hindus they have a black stone, which is a private stone, right? A stone resembled the vagina, a stone resembled the, the, the penis, and the, the black stone resembled the vagina, and it's a black stone. And the same clothes exactly they wear. The same shaving, the same shoulder, they show everything. The Muslim version of heaven is the same as the earth version of heaven. It's about sex. Everything for them is a sexual thing. Islam is a pure sexual cult. You see, if you believe in Allah and you go to heaven, what you do? The second you enter heaven, you are getting naked, ready for sex. 
there's women you never met they are waiting for you and they have a victory sign with their with their with their with their legs you don't even know who are those women and right away they will start singing for you and they will jump on you there's a sheikh who explained what will happen to you when you enter the door if you're in your house in the heaven how they will jump on you i wish i if i played for you it's it's a it's a it's a porn literally he starts saying what they will do to you step by step one is sucking your and the other one is sucking your and the other one is sucking your you know what what you're I'm talking about and he is speaking about that life on TV hey brother hey brother the fun you are waiting for you will not believe it brother the second you enter your room brother one she will be sucking your uh, and the one you will be sucking even even your nipples will be sucking it I mean you will be sucked by mosquitoes and this is life on TV actually you know what let me find the video even I, I will not play it but maybe <clears throat> for reference and the good thing you don't understand otherwise you might convert to Islam if you get so excited All those videos are description of the whore. Look at this picture here. Look, the title is You Will Not Believe the Description of the Whore. And they have a woman wearing a clothes which is see through. Look, this is the whore, brother. Do you see your whore future? Eh, the whore, you see her? Okay. And oh, look, 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 look at their this hand, his hand is open. A brother, the whore, a brother, brother. Look, 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 look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's looking at the sky, describing the whore, you know, getting so horny. Uh, this guy, uh, he got killed and he is waiting for the whore. All those videos speaking about the whore. Look at the whore, brother. The whore, brother, the whore, brother. Look at this. This one, she have, a, she have wings and she is so blonde. Actually, this is one of the reasons I don't want to convert to Islam. I mean, imagine you jump inside the room and then uh, uh, hundreds of women, they jump on you. I mean, what I did, I mean, is that a reward or is it the punishment? And what we would do now, there's like a, a ticket there, like one by one, they start with me. All of them in the same time. And all of them, they sing for you the same song. Get my book, Sex and Allah, and you will see what I'm talking about. This why I made a book, it's called Sex and Allah's True Value. The whole topic is about Islam and sex, and I make it really, uh, let us say, uh, otherwise the topic will be so big. So I make it uh, summarizing the most important points about the cult of Islam when it's come to sex. Look at this guy. Look at his face, man. Look at his face describing the whore for us. Do you see? how much he is excited guys do, do you see what other you don't see did you do you do you see do you see this is a this is the real abdul describing the whore look at his face oh, no. give me give me something i cannot see this <coughs> <coughs> look at his face I look at this look, look at the other guy hmm. look at this guy all those guys they want to tell you about the whore this guy he is seeing whore when he's dying too this guy is crying saying brother a brother the whore will come to us a brother each time we have sex with them they will come virgin again i mean what fun what is fun in that man it's, it's even cheating but until now I did not find the the, the video I wanna I was talking about I, I did not hear those videos so I don't know what they are saying but I'm assuming all of them they are the same anyway you know <clears throat> all of them are the same where is the video until now, I did not see the video. 
that that one is a is a truly the shake is so this guy he was watching a lot of porn I mean look I just searched for whore and look what is this it's English I hope I can find that video it's impossible this is what they are dreaming about uh, look guys look at the title you will not believe what the whore she will sing to her husband in heaven and you will cry for the most beauty she have yeah the whore they will sing for you a song all of all the whore in the heaven they have one thing to song for it sing for you forever for eternity this is why when you go and work as a maid from Indonesia for those people they are sexually aroused they are hungry this is why they will not let you treat you as a human this video is which one is better description women of this earth or the whore look what the Muslims are busy with I mean which one is better a brother women in this earth or the whore me I, I wish you speak Arabic I don't want to give you get you dizzy but I did not find enter now the video the one I was talking about yeah it's endless ah, I found it I found it I found it who here speak Arabic who who here speak Arabic because uh, you know this is only for those who speak Arabic who speak Arabic? Anyone? This is the video. It's a pure porn. This is a sheikh speaking in the TV, speaking about how they will suck you. You know, this is what I remember. You know what? Let me let me hear some of it. Hold on. That's how I can hear some of it without playing it. Because I don't want to. I don't want to, just to to be sure that this is the one. But I think this is the one from the from the image. And give me a second yes it is the one it is the one uh, just he said one word I remember that's it it is the one yeah and this is the link for those who want but it's in Arabic anyway like only those who speak Arabic they can understand hey brother when you enter to the heaven brother in your room and the brother they will start jumping on you brother and they will start sucking you brother once she will put her your her mouth in your mouth and the other one in your uh, and the other one in your uh, and, and the other one and the brother they will be fighting over you brother this is the link you speak Arabic be sure there's no kids around yeah all of those is about who The description of the whore. What is that? This is the description of the whore. A woman, she is wearing a dress showing her leg. <laughs> Abdul Kader. Hey, Abdul Kader, why I'm lying? Do you like to call me Abdul Kader? Guys, we have a brother Abdul Kader here, and he is saying, Christian Prince, you are a liar. Well, Abdul Kader, do you like to call me live on air? What do you say, Mr. Abdul Kader, brother? Give me your Skype and I will call you Abdul Kader. The funny, the, the Abdul Qadir mean the, the slave of the one who is able, but Allah is not able to do anything. <clears throat> do I dare to debate you in 2029? Can we make it 2029 in one day? Because at that date you gave me, I think I will be taking a shower. I'm an Arab, I take like a uh, you know that will be one uh, century shower for me I mean you could not find a better date than 229 wait 29 29 and one day maybe you can do it it's my shower day I'm celebrating one century shower <clears throat> where is uh, this guy Abdul Qadir 
I think Abdul Qadir he stopped by the second he heard about the whore. Otherwise, he wasn't interested in our title. But his ears start pinking him. They get it, they get they get pinky, you know. Oh, sorry, not pinky, kinky, kinky. They start getting kinky the second he heard the word whore. They can feel it, man. They can feel it right away. Those whore are different. They are unique whore. So he was walking by. Uh, the title is not important, but then he heard whore. What whore? Did you say whore? Uh, no, no, I did not say whore. I said whore. So because of the word, he he got by and he stopped here. Hmm. What is that? Look at this video, <laughs> guys. Do you see this description? This uh, this type this. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I think this. The, I, I think this uh, picture is added by one of you, Alexander Phil. Yeah, yeah, he is here. Yeah, I think this is his channel. Yeah, look at this image, man. Man. So you are like you will be sitting there, and all those women waiting in front of you. Unbelievable! I cannot wait. I want to go and uh, and, jo and join jo Mujahideen. <sighs> you go to fast translation to deceive people. Okay, fast translation made by Muslims. How it is okay, it's fast translation made by Muslims. That's me. Muslims are liars. Thank you very much. So even when you attack me, you are supposed to be me. Hmm. Muslims they have fast translation. I agree. I never saw a Muslim have honest translation. All right. No, I think this guy maybe is just joking. I think I think Abdul Qadir is a is a is a is a female, not a male. Most of the Muslim women who come to the chat, they use a male name. They text me in Skype, and it's end to be a female. Once a Muslim, as she sent me an email, it was a very threatening email, and she said to me, so what if your voice is so sexy? I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And I was saying to myself, man, this is a very hateful email. I mean, what she meant by that? I could not stay for two days after that. She want to kill me, she want to kidnap me. What does that mean? And then now I'm thinking about it. I mean, this is a lot of hate. I don't know what is behind this threat message. So I think Abdul Qadir is the same. Abdul Qadir, do you dare to call me in Skype? Hmm? <clears throat> what do you think, Abdul Qadir? Abdul Qadir, call me in Skype. If you want the debate, I will give you uh, my book, Six and Allah, for free. If you win, what do you think? You call it sexual tension? <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. You don't like Muslim women? Oh, Muslim women are women like everybody, but for me, why I would be interested in a Muslim woman? You see, it's very wrong to have a relationship and to marry from a woman. She don't believe in what you believe. That is the end of your faith. Because you destroy your family, you destroy your value, and you compromise the Bible because the Bible says that light and darkness cannot live under one roof. All right? The only way for a man who is a Christian to have a wife she is not a Christian if he converted to Christianity after he married from that woman. But a man who is a Christian already, he should not, or a woman who is a Christian already, should not ever marry from someone who is not a Christian. And why you marry someone at a Christian? I mean, there's millions of women there, they are good. There's millions of men, they are Christian. Go, you cannot find somebody. Your kids will be divided. 
you teach them that Jesus is God he says Jesus is no one you teach them that the Bible is good he says no the Bible is corrupt it's evil so why you want to do that to your family it's stupid of you and then mostly marrying a, a non-believer he will corrupt you too why you want to do that <clears throat> And additional to that, if you marry a Muslim man, uh, he might be not be able to have uh, sexual intercourse like he's a prophet. And then he have to pray to Allah, and they have to wait until Allah he send him a dish of shish kebab, and then he eat it, and then he get the power of forty men. But what of Allah? He did not. He's out of dishes. Have you ever heard of a prophet? His God he fixes a private part by send him a dish. Are you there, Abdul Qadir? Am I lying? Even the power of Allah come in dishes. Uh, even not only that, Muhammad he said that the angel Jibreel came down and he installed a dish of faith and dish of wisdom. So look, we have sexual ability in dish, we have faith in dish, we have wisdom in dish. Even wisdom come in dishes. By the way, this is why I'm wise. Every day before I open my broadcast, I eat one of the dish of Allah. I have a lot of them. Do we have any Abdul Qadir there? <laughs> Muhammad said after 40 days, semen gets into womb. Huh? Well, and what are you asking me? I don't know what the question. I mean, semen, this, they live only for five, five days. Muhammad, he says 40 or 50, they are not sure. Muhammad was almost close, you see. You see, if Muhammad, he says five days, the Muslim, they will make a movie about this. But because Muhammad, he says 50 days, uh, man, we wish we took a zero. Yeah, always I ask Muslims, you are right, always I ask Muslims when they call me, what you ate today? Because Muslims, they answer you based on the food. If a Muslim, he eat too much uh, watermelon, drink to, uh, fruit, then we will we expect diarrhea. If he eat uh, too much uh, ajwa, then we expect like a very hard time to process, to squeeze him. Depend on the food. Angela, you want to meet me one day? Why one day? I mean, what kind of meeting this meeting? One day? Why we don't make it two day? What kind of invitation this one? So uh, let me guess. So you want to invite me to have, uh, let us say, uh, coffee with you one day. Uh, I look in the weeks. I could not find any of them. It's called one day, which means you don't want to see me. If you are serious, you will say Sunday, you will say Saturday, you will say Tuesday. But look what you choose. You choose one day. I mean, come on. You want to trick me? You think because I'm an Arab, you can do that to me? You cannot. All of you want to invite me to your country one day. That means it would never happen. Name a day. I make it Saturday. Then, you know, What one day? Isn't it enough we have one Allah? One Allah, we can't see him. One day we will not see him too. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> hey Kevin, how are you? Is that you? Because the only one who mentioned the name of Kenny is you, is, is Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> you know when somebody he tried to be get get attention so what he do he go he change his name and he came christian prince if you are a brave call this guy but you are the guy 
You want to bet? You want to bet? You are a potato seeking attention. Potato kid. Let your dad call me. Or your mom. It's okay. At least somebody mature. Andrew, where are you going, Andrew? Andrew, you think join our chat is the same as leaving? My friend, my chat is the same as Islam. You get in, you are welcome. You leave. We send you to ISIS. You can't leave. My chat is the same as Islam. One way. To, you know, that is why we grow. This is the only way to grow. You get in, you can't get out. <clears throat> I want to make your laugh as my phone ring tone. I think Hakuna, you hate your mother-in-law, don't you? Hmm. And I think you will put that ringtone uh, 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 for the number of your mother-in-law. Hmm. Do we have any Muslim? Anyone? Any two? Uh, Raja, how are you, Raja? I am your fan since three weeks ago. And uh, let us uh, share the comments here so people can see. And uh, where is the comment? It jumped. Where Raja is gone? You now we can't find Raja. Hold on. Three weeks ago, I watched your videos. Thank for all you have done. And I am proud to call you as a prince of a Christian. My friend, I am the only thing make me a prince because I am a child of the king of kings. Humbly, I am no one. But thank you anyway. All right? There is a movie, by the way. Uh, it's an old movie. Uh, my name is no one. Watch it. It's a comedy. <clears throat> Any Mohammedan? Thank you, guys. Thank you. My wife can tell when I am watching CP. She hear me say. <laughs> hey, by the way, I learned Indonesian. In case you do not know. I learn how to say a good morning and how to say good afternoon and even how to say lapuk. Islam is a lapuk religion, expired. So I'm going to open an Indonesian channel and the only three words I will say the whole time I'm talking is good morning, good evening, good afternoon and lapuk. You like it, like it. You don't like it, I don't know what to do. <clears throat> Lapuk, see here we go. Let me teach you Indonesian now. This is the benefit of learning. Lapuk means expired. Uh, yesterday, somebody says to me, "You are a single expired," and I think he my he was saying, "I'm like Allah because Allah is single, and he's expired." No, Mohammedan. <clears throat> yeah, Bojang, Bojang Lapuk, Bojang Lapuk, single expire. I don't know what does that mean. Seriously, I mean, what? How how single can be expire? What does that mean? What? So if you are a single, you are expire. What? How you make the? In Indonesia, you read it from left to right or from right to left?
Do you read same as English or same as Arabic? Left to right? Oh, okay. <clears throat> you know, when I start learning English, it was kind of confusing. Because in Arabic, we, write, we read it from right to left, and uh, everything is different. As an example, in Arabic, you say, uh, the house is beautiful. You know? Uh, in English, you say, beautiful the house. You know? Uh, it's totally different. Everything is the opposite. Do we have any Muslim here want to say anything? And by the way, I think we say, uh, <clears throat> I think in English you say, uh, like a beautiful woman uh, for security. Because the woman will is listening, and now by saying a beautiful, she put her nails back. Like the nails are ready. So by saying the word beautiful, she relax. Then you say women, she relax more. If you say women and then there's nothing, we do not know what is going to be next, her nails will be ready. So I think the purpose was security issue. I'm just trying to think about the logic of the language. And this is why Muhammad, he always was using security language. Where is the Muslims today? Hmm? Nobody? A new word. Budu. Budu. Budu, which means stupid. Budu. I will need this one. Budu. What do you mean Budu is stupid? Voodoo is a close to Buddha. How that can be? What? Are you serious? How Buddha can be stupid? What? Mean Buddha? And now I know where Dudu is coming from. Like when a child he do do do, like he's doing ah, uh, uh, you say to him do 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 do. Uh, he's coming from Budu. This is stupid. Okay. Budu. There's a there's an English song. It's called Budu me be Budu like what what what? Budu me Budu who? Ah ha. Budu Budu. So we can change this word in the Quran. You remember this, this, the chapter where we're speaking about supposedly the father of Abraham. So Abraham, he said to his father, Azar. So we should take Azar and we say Budu because Ad, uh, Azar means foolish. No, not Voodoo. Say Jason, he have a heavy, heavy, heavy ears. Uh, Jason, change your headset, man. I just bought a headset from Amazon for $10. $10, brother. And I'm going to return them because there's no sound that's coming and nothing is working. Can you ex can you help me? Uh, you help me a lot to recover, break up my ex-Muslim girlfriend. Why you have a Muslim girlfriend? First of all, we as a Christian, we should not have girlfriend and boyfriend. That is not really unless it's a friend thing i mean but it's a girlfriend the way like people live together or sleep together that's absolutely false and relationship in such a way uh, girlfriend and boyfriend you see if you have a good intention life always is about the intention of what you want so if your intention is just to have fun and to sleep around Eh, I mean, at the end, you are the one who's losing. You might think you are winning, 
you are having fun but at the end you are losing because by time you will lose your ability to love any any human being you will not find a real love because you abuse your feeling and you give yourself your body to many women same for the women when the woman she sleep with many many men then in her memory she have many men already so what love mean it doesn't make any he's just a new guy there's like just one more so uh, uh, being truthful with one person it have a reason it's a, it's always it's the for the your, for your best for your healthy life even your physical health because there is a you know there's sexual diseases uh, those relationships bring a lot of problems being with one person uh, being decent truthful and loving that is the most healthy life you can have but a person who sleep around today I have a girlfriend tomorrow I have a new girlfriend and in the future if you try to find someone you want to marry her she will be just a new girlfriend you will not really see a wife in her because you have many women before and she have many men before so what kind of life this life is And then when you sleep, you sleep with all the all the all the all the men who sleep with that woman before you, and she sleep with all the women who slept with the with you before her. Additional to that, whatever disease you cut from them, you will give to her. You see, there's birds, there's birds. When when their female die, they don't go to another female. They, they stay even until they die birds they do that animals there is you know some kind of people you know the husband he died after a week or two she is out for dating as if she lost a, a puppy so this is why you have to be careful about you you associate your life with with who because this future partner Whatever you call him, wife, husband, he can destroy your life. Many people destroy their life literally destroyed because of a stupid decision they make. <coughs> like be gone, what be gone? <coughs> I don't know what do you mean, my friend. <coughs> And by the way, uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, this is an Islamic thing. This does not have nothing to do with Christianity. This is something spread. People lost uh, their shame and they start sleeping around. And not only that, you know, and then they, uh, and the liberals who they hate Christianity, they start promoting that the one who don't sleep around, she's a bad girl. She is stupid. It's embarrassing. Like she is 24, 25, or even 30, but she is a still virgin. That is a, for them. It's a shame. They make fun of you. They will bully, you know, bully you. So, uh, 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 ugly became right. Wrong became uh, uh, right. Uh, uh, right became wrong. But at the end of the day, the truth is not what they say to you. More in Tahid. I don't know what you mean, my friend. In Africa, Tahid or Tahid? Everything you do in relationship with uh, with somebody have to be have, have attention, a good attention to marry that person. Let us say you want to talk to a woman to know her. Uh, and sometime you might find the woman she is good but there is some something push you away from her but still in the beginning even if you try to talk it should be a good intention sometime men is hesitating is that woman she is good for me maybe she is not i'm not sure you need to take your time uh, but don't run into decision which can cost you heavily later take your time be sure because we as a Christian, we should not get married and divorce, get married and divorce the same as the Muslim do. Because Muslim, they don't have marriage, they have boyfriend, 
sex contract. Well, the Indonesian book, when it's ready, your friend, you will know, I don't know, people are working it. <clears throat> a Muslim, his name is Al Mahdi. He is asking me to explain verses from him, so he will he will convert to Christianity. My friend, if you convert to Christianity, I will laugh at who. So it's not my for my benefit to convert to Christianity. Why you want to convert to Christianity? Stay as Muhammad and who believe that God will give you endless penis. What's wrong with you? Why you wanna? What's wrong? So you want me to explain for you a verses in the Bible so you convert to Christianity? So what I would do after that? Huh? I'm going to import buy fools from uh, eBay. Come on. Oh boy. <clears throat> And why you don't like that chapter in the Bible, my friend? Isn't your prophet he believe in the same? The one who changed the religion, kill him. I mean, look at the hypocrisy of the stupid Abdul. Isn't your prophet, he says, the one who changed his religion, kill him? Hmm, let me get you busted. <laughs> <laughs> For the Jews, being a Jew is not only a religion; it is a citizenship. It's a, it is, it is an identity. So when you leave them, you are betraying them. For a Muslim, why? This is your prophet. So you, if you are complaining about that verse in the Bible, as you claim, that means you are a hypocrite. Eh, but nothing in you. You are a Muslim. Have you ever seen a Muslim not a hypocrite? I explained it to you. I just did. I just explained it to you. The Jews in their book, the one who betrayed them should be killed. Your prophet said, the one who leave his cult, the cult of Islam, he should be killed. It's in the front of you. Hmm? So what is your complaint? I'm not sure. Are you saying this is wrong? Are you saying that the one who leave his religion and the one who says kill him, he is a filthy man? Say it. Say it. Be a man. Oh, there's no screen. Sorry. No screen. Hold on. Here we go. Hmm? Say it, Abdul. Exactly what it says. In that verse in the Bible, you are you don't like it. It says in the front of you, the Jews they say the one who be, betray us, the one from you who leave us, who join and be worship other God, kill him. So what's your complaint? Your prophet said the same. Are you man enough to say the one who says that? The Bible difference, the basic difference in the Bible, Quran, the Bible says. To slaughter mother and father if they ask to worship brother whoever killed you let me let me show you how stupid what you just said the Quran say the Muhammad says whoever changed his religion kill him even if it's a child whoever women men child whoever changed religion kill him it's in front of you I mean you are just a stupid kid you don't know what are you talking about guys does it say it does it say who what who is ever does it say whoever change potato Betito, too much hummus, too much hummus, diarrhea. Yuck. Whoever change his religion, kill him. Man, woman, child, whoever. Read it. Do you see it? I just answer with the screen. <laughs> and why you don't call me, Mahdi? Why you don't call me? Do you like to call? Do you like to call me? Aren't you the guy from Nigeria so we can laugh? Call me so we can laugh. I want you to say that the one who say that is an evil person. Your prophet says whoever. And not only that, I can show you your prophet ordering to kill women and children. And not only that, I can show it to you from the Quran. 
and not only that I will spank you until your bum become red as never before do you dare to call me I think now you have a real reason to call me because I just said to you I will spank you and you know how exciting that for you I know who you are you like spanking so be honest do you want to call me so you can get your daily spank Mahdi hello don't you want to have your daily spank I have a lot of spanking for you <clears throat> you know one of the things Muhammad he said that if somebody is a gay spank him as a penalty I mean if the guy if you spank him he's a gay he will love it me Call me Mahdi, call me, and we will talk about the verse in the Bible, and I will show you what is equal from the Quran. Do you dare? But you are a bit. You know what? Let me block you. Let me block you for one purpose to force you to call me. Get lost. If you are man enough, call me. I have no time for kids. I'm not going to waste my time. Potatoes. Your prophet was dying kissing the shoes of the Jews to be accepted as a Jew and he accept everything And not only that your prophet he took an oath in the Bible you don't like and he says I believe in thee and the one who sent thee So your prophet do not know what is written in this book Huh Do your prophet know what is written in this book or he is a coward like you here we go This is your prophet saying to the Jews all the messenger said he said and he said to bring the Torah bring what the Torah do you remember the book the Torah this is the book you are talking about it was then brought he then would draw the cushion from beneath of him and place on the Torah saying I believe in thee and in him who revealed thee so you stupid coward you are making fun of the Torah you're a prophet take up take an oath in the Torah so who is the donkey here uh, sorry who is the voodoo here booty booty be doo scooby scooby doo you see when they say to you the Torah the Torah the Torah okay how the Torah is ugly and your prophet is swear by the Torah and he treats with a lot of respect and he say I, I, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee hello hello it's me you're looking for I made you look like a voodoo <laughs> Hey, I can block you again because you are a kid. You're a prophet. He swear by the Torah, as you see. I don't care. You are just a kid. Be a man. Change your name. You are a hypocrite and you are a coward. You say you don't accept what is written in the Torah, and your prophet he accept everything in the Torah. So either you are a liar or your prophet was a hypocrite taking an oath in a book he don't like. Correct, guys. This is one of the signs of the hypocrisy of the Muslims today. Their prophet, he took an oath. He said, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. And not only that, he put the Torah in the cushion, which means he treated with respect and he put his hand on it, swearing by it. If you give me the Quran, I will never swear by the Quran. This is the book of the devil. So if Muhammad is a true prophet and the Torah is a corrupt book, there is no way a true prophet he will swear in a corrupt book unless he himself is a hypocrite, liar, and a false prophet. Correct, guys? Can Fadi Harun call me? No, he cannot. What, Fadi will leave Islam? Why he want to call me? There is no need to talk to me. Even if you decide to leave Islam, I don't want you to call me. It was referring 
to page according to a scholar in Islam guys guys look look at uh, what Qasimi said it was referring to a page according to a scholar you and the scholar are a bunch of liars read with me carefully bring the Torah he didn't say bring the page then it was a place in the front of him the Torah the Torah not the page and then he said he did not often even open the book as you see here bring the Torah and then he said I believe in thee and the one who sent thee liars he swear by a page have you ever heard of somebody swear by a page I mean look at the deception of this cult a brother a brother could you there is a person in the name of Christian print, and he said that the prophet is swear by the Torah. In fact, he was swearing by one word, which was in. Only that word in between two brackets, brother. He was not swearing by the Torah, he was swearing by the word in between two brackets. Brother, so that the whole book it's only in, he was swearing only by in a brother, yes, by in only. I mean, look at the, the, the madness, man. He was swearing by the page, by the page. By the page, you say, I believe in thee. <laughs> good to try, good to try. What about the Quran saying, Musaddiqan lima ma'ahum? Stupidity is amazing. I hate stupidity. Hmm? I hate stupidity. Stupidity is the disease of this world today. Read carefully, Abdul. Abdul, yeah, Abdul. Which translation you like, Abdul? <clears throat> it does give you uh, uh, kinky translation all Muslim translation are kinky anyway and when he they, where they come to them the Jews a book this Quran from Allah confirming what is with them what is what with them so your scholar told you he swear by the page brother by the page brother only by that page brother a brother i heard he was swearing by the number of that page not the page the page of that the, the, the number of that page was number 12 brother he was swearing by number 12. <laughs> low iq hello little tanya you have that you, you 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 people you have an iq of a chicken and you think when you say buck, 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 you convince us just make a loud sound right hmm. the torah is sent by allah not a book written by genesis or etc torah was with the jews 1400 years ago the reason why not talking it cause it was sent to a small nation what does that mean samira what are you talking about this is the this is the Torah was given to the Jews between their hand in the time of Muhammad. So stop fooling yourself. And the verses of stoning to death, it's still in the Torah, and it does not exist in your book. Why? Because a goat ate your book. See, you say that the Torah is corrupt. Here we go. We can show you the verses for stoning to death in the Torah, but in your book it's gone. What happened? A goat ate your Quran. Who said that? Aisha. Who was the witness? Aisha. Who else? The goat. So in our book, everything is still there. In your book, you have nothing there. Torah is not corrupt, it's lost. That is me even more stupid. What kind of God? He write the book by his hand, yet it's lost. Can you call Allah to look for somewhere maybe behind the couch guys it's lost it's lost I mean what you can say nobody have it the Jews are spread around the earth and they lost the Torah brother they lost the Torah <laughs> hey, brother they lost the Torah brother they lo it's you who lost the Quran you don't have the Quran of Muhammad where is the Quran of Muhammad the earliest Quran you have is more than 800 years after Muhammad. Where is the Quran? Hmm. 
and until now we are looking for the goat you know the goat is wanted by the way if anyone have information about this goat you have a big reward from the government of Saudi Arabia and you know there's many people they are saying it's a gossip I'm not sure that the one behind the goat is the Russian the same what they did in the election in America the Democrat they suspect that the goat was sent by the Russian you know the Russian uh, hackers Allah used to transmit the Quran to Hafs. Hafs is a fraud. Hafs is 200 years after Muhammad and the Muslim Sunni, they say he is a fraud. So you got your Quran from a fraud. Secondly, what kind of God he is waiting for Hafs to bring you the Quran? Where is, it? Where is the Quran of Muhammad? Number three. Your God said that inna alayna jam'uhu wa Qur'anuhu. It is on us to collect the Quran, not to Hafs, who came more than 200 years after Muhammad. Isn't it Allah who promised that He is the one who will collect the Quran? Did, did Allah collect the Quran? This is why the Muslim did not write the Quran, because Allah, He said, He will collect it. Read it. This is your, this is your you know, your Quran. You see it? It is for us to collect it and to give it to Muhammad. But you don't have the Quran of Allah, and Allah did not collect the Quran. Allah, He made a false promise. Hafs was born 75 years after the death of Muhammad. That's a lie. Hafs was more than 200 years after Muhammad. Additional to that, Hafs is a fraud. Just type right now in Arabic, in Google, Prophet Google, huh? Hafs was a fraud. And you will see all the reference coming from Islamic website. Hafs hadith is rejected, not even da'if. It's rejected, totally rejected because he is a fraud. The Muslim, they say Hafs is a thief, and he is a fraud and he used to steal books and he claim it which means he take a book from you and then he write and he claimed that it is his book do you want me to show you that do you want me to show you that and Hafs he took the Quran from his stepfather who is a stepfather Asim Asim was a fraud too do you want me to show you the reference Okay, uh, Samira, what about you give me the reference that Hafs was born 75 years after Muhammad? What do you think, guys? Let us see that. So we can laugh together. You said 70 or 75? Okay, show me 75. Show us the 75. <clears throat> Did Muhammad have uh, children? No, he never had a children, not even girls. Muslim uh, Shia, they believe only his, his the only child he have is Fatima, but even Fatima, she is not his child. <clears throat> if we go right now and we do a little search in Prophet Google, let us do that. This is the website of Ahl al Hadith. Very much Sunni website. This is what? Sunni website, not Shia. Are you there, Samira? Are you there? This is Sunni website. Multaqa Ahl al Hadith. Title Hafs 
القارئ متروك الحديث. The hadith of Hafs is totally rejected. Why? They explain to you why. You know what? Let us click a translation, Google translation, peace upon him, and see what the tr translation will be. Translate to Arabic. What Arabic? I want this is Arabic. Option translate to English. Arabic to English. Where is English? Uh, English. Here we go. Read with me, uh, uh, Saudi Samira. <laughs> this is you Muslims. This is what you Muslims say about him. All right. This is what you Muslims. You see what what they are saying about him. Uh, <clears throat> You know, for sure, translation of of uh, of Google is not good, but you know, uh, you know, he fabricate hadith, he lie about hadith. Uh, um, in the authority of Ibn etc. Blah 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 blah. He said uh, from his father. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. I mean, the translation is really horrible. Let us see. Al Bukhari said about Hafs, leave him. Al Bukhari, what Al Bukhari? Al Bukhari said about Hafs, leave him. What what does that mean? Matruk, matruk, which means rejected, garbage. <laughs> Al Bukhari said that about Hafs. Because <laughs> he's a liar. Even you, you Muslims are weird. You reject his hadith and you accept his Quran. Continue. Uh, uh, a translation here is weird, man. He write his speech. He li he's a liar. He he fabricate his speech. Uh, Al Baghdadi he says, do not write his speech, which means don't accept his his words. Um, narrated from blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, it says it is weak to talk. You know, like his his hadith is is always weak. Um, and actually, this is not correct translation again. It doesn't say even weak. And he said, he should not write his hadith. I should not write his hadith. Why? Because he's a liar. And um, I said, what is the case of the letter? Okay. Okay. Look at this, guys. And was taking people book and copies. Here they were saying he's a fraud. Hafsu ibn Sulaiman, he used to steal people books and he copied from them and he claimed it to his own. So he will call, he will take a book from a Christian prince, he will borrow it, and then he will publish it under his name. Do you see it? This is a stupid Google translation. <laughs> uh, so all those references. And uh, look, Abu Bakr said, and he was a liar. He's what? He is a liar. This is Hafs, the one you get the Quran from him, and this is what you Muslim Sunni say about him. You Muslim Sunni, you say he is a liar. What a shame. What is that, man? Can I give you uh, proof? Yeah, sure, you can give me proof, Mr. Muslim Prince. A Muslim Prince, when I give me a proof that Allah preserved the Quran. Yeah, right. Here we go. I have a proof here. The goat ate the Quran. What your God uh, was able to do about it? What about this proof in front of us, Mr. Muslim, Muslim Prince? Are you going to accuse Aisha that she's a liar? Is that Aisha saying that the goat ate the Quran? Okay, show me the verses of a breastfeeding for adult 10 times. There are 31 Quran today, and one of them is Hafs. Each of them have different verses, and Hafs has six to okay. So, what is that? That the proof that the Quran is not uh, not the same. Same time, even the Muslims in the interpretation they explain that there's many verses are corrupt. In the top of the Shia, in the top of that, all the Shia agree that the Quran today is not the Quran of Muhammad.
let us not to waste time show me the verses as long the the Quran is preserved show me the verse of a breastfeeding for adult recite it for me where is the verse for breastfeeding for adult ten time and why you Muslim don't practice it any Muslim want to call me and recite the verse of ten time breastfeeding I like breastfeeding by the way I'm hungry I did not eat actually and by the way I don't talk much about the Quran corrupt because how you can corrupt the corrupt there's nothing is called this is a corrupt stupid cult so how you want to corrupt the corrupt how you can do that what about you call me and you prove to me that Islam is from God anyway let us say the Quran is preserved in a CD I mean even a human being can do that one verse seven one plus what one verse surah one verse 71 one plus seven equal to eight number of the surah two has 86 verses so two plus 86 equal to 288 even number do this from to one to 114 you see this is very stupid of you my friend <clears throat> First of all, the one verse is not the chapter. The, the first chapter in the Quran is not the first chapter. Secondly, it's based on who you decide which one you divide the number with. Like, who is the one who told you to do like one plus seven is eight, and that is the number will do for everybody. The chapter of Al Fatiha is a chapter is not the first chapter in the Quran. The first chapter in the Quran is Al uh, uh, ninety six. So look how Muslims they come with silly they try to prove to us silly stupid things I can play the same game and by the way if we do calculate the numbers you will see that you are being stupid because the middle of the Quran is not 57 I mean you Muslims you have a problem guys how we can we how we can have 157 the middle of the Quran it's not even number let me explain to you Just to show you, let me draw something for you to show you how how silly, even when they try to prove to us something. I will draw a line. <clears throat> okay. So if we draw a line here, and we say this is number one, and this is number one fourteen. Let us make it one to ten first. One to ten, just to explain to you. And here we have number five. Five is not the middle. Five itself is not the middle. Why? Because the number next to it is five two. To make it simple for you, if we start counting from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. However, in the other side, we have the same numbers. So the middle is going to be between not on five and we are talking about what? 114 57 is the middle That is impossible Are you guys getting my point? To make it more simple hold on because some people maybe they are slow If we have 10 cars We have 10 cars let us make uh, ten cars. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have to make them smaller now. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And let us say all of them they are equal in size. So what is the middle? Guys, which one is the middle? We are talking about mathematically accurate if this is number one this is one oh, hold on this is two 
this is 3, this is 4, this is 5. So is 5 really the middle? It's not. Because now, based on this, we have 2 middle. The other one is 5 too. Let us go. This is 1. <laughs> this is 2. <laughs> this is 2. This is a 3. Hold on. This is a 3. This is 4. This is 5. So which which middle is the middle? Guys, you understand? How this can be the middle? We have two five. Which one of which one of them is the middle? So when you assume that the 57 is the middle, that is stupid of you. The middle is something between the two five here. That is the middle. Here. That is the middle. This one is not the middle, and this one is not the middle. The middle is 5.5. .5. To be the middle, which means the number have to be 11. To have accurate middle, we have to have the number 11. Thank you. So in the Quran, is the same. As long as we have it from both sides, that can be accurate if if the Quran is not 114 and if it is not 57 which means if it is 59 and then we can see in the middle of both of them there is a verse it's the middle same time Umar al khattab he says the Quran was a thousand thousand and twenty five thousand letter how many letter we have today left Can you tell me Muslim friends? All those miracles, numbers, numbers, and the Quran is false. And by the way, did you add the chapter of a breastfeeding for adult which is missing eating by the goat or you took it off? <coughs> who is the one who took that verse off? Is, so are you saying to me the goat made them equal because the goat ate the verse? Correct, guys? <laughs> okay, if the goat did not eat this verse, are we going to have the same numbers working for you? The goat not only ate one verse, it she ate verses. Read. So the one who made the, the, the miracle according to you is the goat. The goat ate perfect in the middle, maybe. The goat, she was licking the top of the ice cream until she make it in one level you like. So you can make a number with it. Silly religion. Trying to find a proof about Islam by numbers. But that will not work. What about your prophet saying the sperm stay inside the woman for 50 days? What about this number miracle? Hmm. Old numbers. Hmm. What about the rest of the chapters? What about the rest of the chapters? Why one and two and the three? What about the rest of the chapters? What about them? Secondly, when you say, as I said, when you say uh, chapter number one, why you choose chapter number one? As you have it today in the Quran, which is the Quran of Uthman, not the chapter number one, which was given to Muhammad after he been squeezed, which is the chapter of Al Alaq. Why did not choose that one? And we just showed you this is not true. It's not fifty-seven. You are just a joker, my friend. The middle is not fifty-seven. This is not an even number. Same time. Same time. How you can say, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. According, you know, can, can you give us a link? 
let, let me let me search for it just for a laugh just to show you how stupid this cult is <clears throat> This is the miracle, right? Even and odd numbers. Hmm. By the even and the odd. <laughs> Allah swear by the even and the odd. <laughs> okay, as you see, the third verse of 89th surah in the Quran draws attention. To the even and the odd numbers the word wa in the quran is used to emphasize the word that succeed uh, 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 succeeded okay when it was used in the beginning of the sentence we translated the word wa as by let me show you here how we get them busted right away Guys, does it say here that the word, the, the, the letter wa is word? If you go right now and I show you in the Muslim website how they calculated the number 19, you will see they don't even calculate the letter wa. They did not calculate it as a letter, they don't calculate it as a word. Here suddenly it became a word just to make numbers work. Do you see it? Hypocrite liars. Then it says. In the in the figure example, the surah of uh, uh, etc. Chapter one, uh, seven, uh, the one sub set surah and seven, and the surah of the cow two eighty six, and two uh, and two surah eighty six uh, uh, two eighty six verses. In the table below, we got number eight. Since the number eight is even number. We write it in the place. Uh, we write it in the place reserved for even numbers, and we added a three. Why you are adding three? I mean, who is the one who come with this calculation to add a three? Trinity <laughs> and two hundred. Why you two hundred? Why three and two hundred? You see those games we can play as much as we want, so we can come with the calculation and sweet us. Who, who is the one who told you to add a three and two hundred? How you can add them and why? So is an even number brother. We write it on the place reserve for even numbers and we added a three and two hundred the surah number and the number of the verse of the surah the family of Omran. Okay, why you choose this one? Why you choose this one exactly? Mm. And then then we got the number 203 uh-huh as this number is an odd number we will write it in the place their odd number and we will do the same operation for all other surahs and verses of the quran as we will see in the table below mm. so look what they did we try our best to come with the calculation and we choose numbers to make and divide and we add as we wish. This is something can be done to anything to fabricate a calculation. So did your God Allah says to you, add number three and 200 and then we make it 203? Where do you get this from? So you have to add numbers to, fa to fabricate a calculation to make it look like a miracle. As simple as that. <clears throat> Secondly, uh, the Quran we have today is not what Muhammad he gave you. This is the Quran of Uthman. So, if the calculation fit with the Quran of Uthman, according to you, that's mean Uthman is God, because Uthman is the one who made it for you. Very desperate, trying to find a miracle. Very desperate. The total surah number in the Quran is 6,555. Okay. The total, guys, remember carefully. The total surah numbers of the Quran 
is 6,555. I want to go there. I hope they are counting the words. If there's a place for the words, where is the words? We can show the formality of uh, having such a table containing 114 surahs and 6,236 verses as below. Okay. <clears throat> Does it say anywhere how many words? Until now, nothing about how many words. Let me show you. All of this is a false fabrication, and nobody is going to calculate anyone to check even if this is true or not. But let us do this. Was Umar al Khattab a liar when he says the Quran was a thousand, thousand, and twenty five thousand letter? How many letters the Quran today? Because based on the numbers, we we will change the whole numbers of the surahs. Same time as we showed you, the Quran have a lot of missing chapters, which nobody can find, and the goat ate many of them. So if the numbers, as you see here, is a miracle, that's mean the one who did the miracle is the goat. Now let us go to our, to to Umar al Khattab. How many words? In the Quran, searching Google, guys, how many words? As for the numbers of the words in the Quran, is seventy-seven four hundred forty-nine. Why you don't use that for your calculation too, so we can laugh? All right, now let us go and see what what the Umar al Khattab he said. And this is remember, this is Amr al Khattab, not anyone. This is not Shia, this is not, you know. I will show you the reference and put it in the screen. <clears throat> Why you don't call me, uh, Prince? So we can we can read for us, just for fun, you know. Better than me trying to prove to you without people hearing your voice. All right. I think even we found it in English. Hold on. All right. Let us see. Read carefully with me. It's reported. It's reported. Uh, let's see where is the one about Omar Alfu Alfu Harf. Mm -hmm. 
we chose this one supposedly to have English and Arabic. I hope they have it there. Oops. Uh -huh. Each time we click here, it goes out. I'm just trying to find the reference. Okay, it looks like this hadith here does not have it. Give me a second. All right. All right. This is the book of Kanzil Ummal. Al Quran. Alfu Alfu Harf was Sabaton Washeruna Alpha Harf, and this hadith it is a thousand thousand and twenty seven thousand letter. And the one who read it, all right, Allah will give him for every letter a version to have sex with. Are you there, Muslim? Are you there? Let us translate the reference so people will see that we are not making things up. All right. The Quran is a thousand thousand letter and twenty seven thousand letter. And for the one who is patient and etc., reading it, Allah will give him for each letter a wife to F. Are you there, Muslim guy? Muslim prince? So how you calculate for me a Quran which is 90% of it is missing because if we have 73, 75,000 letter of the Quran today but the Quran was more than a million and 27,000 letter. Was Omar lying? And for reading every letter Allah will give you. Allah disagree? How Allah disagree? Did Allah give you the numbers? <laughs> Guys, Allah disagree with this statement. Allah disagree. Did you speak to Allah? This is Omar al-Khattab and this is, your, your, this is your books. So, I mean, I feel sorry for the Muslims. They try their best trying to fabricate the stories to make, to make their book look as it is accurate. Secondly, let us say that those numbers are exist. Still, the Quran is a stupid book. What kind of God? He said the sperm coming from the backbone. What does that mean? What kind of God? He says the sperm coming from the ribs of the women. What kind of God? He said that the sperm transform into a, a, a congealed dead blood. What kind of God? He said that the earth is a flat and Allah, he placed the mountains in the top of the earth. What kind of God? He said the sun set in murky water. So look at the look at the, the stupid try. They they try to cover the shame of the Quran and the stupidity of the Quran. They start playing with numbers, trying to make a calculation. Nobody will follow after it, unless you are good in mathematics. And, and I'm sure you will find that it's it, it's a lie. The same as I did with number nineteen. But the Quran itself is a book of shame and stupidity. So now, if I make a book, have perfect numbers as you claim. That will make it from God? What if it's from Satan? <laughs> and all the numbers you gave me is, is not true. All of them. Because look, you start saying, I'm going to add this to that, and then I will divide this to that. Why you don't divide something else to that? So you start trying, 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 trying to come with the formula which make it look like as you wish. But that formula is a lie. 
So now where we have the, the more than 80 to 90 percent of the Quran, where they go? What happened? The answer is very simple. I actually she said the goat ate a lot of the Quran. The same lies they say as the numbers of women in the Quran. The Quran says there is etc. women, etc. men. The Quran says uh, uh, etc. Uh, death, etc. life. We calculate the numbers, we find all of them they lie. Who, if he's a Shia, Shia even even more in trouble because Shia is the one who keeps saying Quran is corrupted. Not a single Shia accept the Quran today. So how he's a Shia, but he don't believe in this. So if he said to me, I don't believe in uh, uh, Umar al-Khattab, well, then he have to believe in the Shia. And all the Shia agree that the true Quran is taken by al-Mahdi. Are you a Shia Muslim prince? Muslim, are you a Shia? Say a Shia and I will show you the corruption. I will show you all your books. All the Shia books agree that the Quran is corrupt. And not only that, I can show you tons of Shia videos explaining why the Quran. Okay, you are a Sunni. So here we go. I showed you Sunni reference. <clears throat> Okay, what is the chapter of Arajim? Can you, did you calculate the number of Arajim? Here we go. We have here at least two chapters are missing. The one for breastfeeding and the one for Arajim. Did you calculate that one? Where, where it is? Where is the verses of Arajim? Look what Omar he said. And this is Sahih Hadith. <clears throat> Do you see it? It's a surah in the Quran where we can find it. It's gone. What about Omar? What Omar said? <clears throat> Read with me. Omar said, I am afraid that after a long time has passed, people may say, we do not find the verses of our regime. Did, guys, did he say verses? Did he say verses? That means this is mentioned many times. It's not one verse. Verses. Okay, where are they? How you can make this uh, funny calculation and there is missing verses according to you. And Omar is worried. Oh, why he's worried? That we will not find it. Why we will not find it? This is in the time of Omar. This is not 10 centuries after Muhammad. In the time of Omar, it is missing. What is missing? Verses. Do you like to add those verses to your calculation to make it more fit? Okay, guys, this is a proof that Allah is a false God because if Allah, he said, he will preserve it and then we find you, Muslims, saying that God ate the Quran. Uh, Omar, he says, the Quran was more than a million and 27,000 letter. And here he's saying there is verses is missing. That's mean Allah is a liar because Allah, he said, he will preserve it, but he did not do anything. What Allah did? How Allah, he preserved it? Allah, he said, Inna wa Quranuhu. It is on us to collect the Quran and to recite the Quran. He did not recite the Quran, neither he collect the Quran. So Allah is a liar. From what you just said, you prove to us that Islam is a false cult. How Allah, he says, he will preserve it, and here we have verses are missing. Is that the book of the Jews? This is Sahih Bukhari. Do you like to add those verses to your calculation, Mr. Muslim Prince? Maybe that will make additional miracle now. And as you see, it says verses, not the verse. Verses. Add to that the verses for breastfeeding for adult 
10 time add to that the the, the, the verses for five time breastfeeding add to that add to that add to that we do not know what is missing <clears throat> so what we will do now Allah he preserved the Quran but as you see it's not <clears throat> Ah, you are just a stupid idiot. You repeat the same thing. We got you busted already. And adding numbers, adding numbers to make a calculation, that's stupid to try even too. You, know, you remember the guy, Rash, uh, Rashad Khalifa from Arizona, the Muslim, who come with the 19 number? He, The Muslim killed him. Do you know why? Because he took a lot of verses out of the Quran to make his calculation work and actually his calculation is a lie I get him busted in two seconds Or what you say I'm sure if I sit and you know I study the numbers you gave me We will find that stupid. But anyway number 57 is not in the middle of the Quran. It's not even And I don't care about your numbers too Why Allah did not mention to you the numbers? Did Allah says the numbers? Did Allah says add two to three? Or this is your own fiction? What about Allah? He says in the Quran. Okay, guys, I will show you something. If you calculate one to seven, brother, and then you add number 200 and add number three, and then add etc., and then we find that this is true, that will be something. So Allah do not know, you know? Allah do not know, but you know. No, this is not a miracle because simply number 57 is not even. You are being stupid here. To have an even number, it has to be 58. And the Quran have to have not 114, should have 115 surah. That will be even number. You are being stupid. Because that will be the middle. The middle of the Quran. If you have the Quran as 115 chapter, that will make number 58 the middle. In the same time, who is the one who made the Quran 114 chapter? Can you give me his name? According to the Quran of Ibn Mas'ud, there is no chapter of Al-Fatiha. Is that correct, Muslim? Muslim, is that correct? Is it true in the Quran of Ibn Mas'ud there is no Al Fatiha? Which one you take? You take Hafs or Ibn Mas'ud? The whole Al Fatiha in Ibn Mas'ud does not exist. All of it. The base of your calculation is 1 to 7 chapter of Al Fatiha. In Ibn Mas'ud, that chapter does not exist. Totally is gone. What take Allah? Where is Allah? I mean, look at this idiot. Have you ever spoke to Allah? Have you ever seen Allah saying this is the Quran? Actually, it's very clear that Al-Fatiha is not part of the Quran. Why? This is a prayer Muhammad was trying to copy Jesus. Read carefully how this is can be Allah talking in the name of Allah. There is no way Allah will say in the name of Allah. This is a prayer. Muhammad was trying to copy Jesus. He said to them, pray like this, our Father art of heaven. This is Al-Fatiha of the Christians. Muhammad was trying to copy them. This is why Ibn Mas'ud did not add it in the Quran, for this is nothing but a prayer. Muhammad, he was teaching the Muslims to say it. There is no way that God will say in the name of Allah. That's stupid. There is no way that God will say praise be to Allah. That would be stupid. There is no way that God will repeat himself twice saying the beneficent, the most merciful, he again in verse number three. There is no way it says Allah will say the honor of the uh, of, of uh, and the uh, uh, resurrection day. There is no way Allah will say for, uh, uh, you alone we worship. Allah saying you alone we worship. This is a prayer made by Muhammad trying to resemble Our Father, art of heaven, the prayer which Jesus taught us. 
The Christian, they have a prayer. The Jews, they have a prayer. Muhammad, they have to come with a prayer. And he made it. This is why it's not exist in the Quran. And not only that, do you speak Arabic, uh, Muslim prince? Have you ever heard of a stupid God like this before? Since when in Arabic we have a word, it's called Bism. Your God, Allah, do not don't speak Arabic. In Arabic, we don't have Bism. We have Bism. Look what we have here. We have Bism. Since when we have Bism? What is that? It is Bism. There is an Aleph here. Okay. Isn't this a mistake? How the word Bism become Bism? Hmm? I will tell you why the Muslim they took it off because it's going to be easier to sing it you Muslims you corrupt your book because if you take a letter from the words of God you corrupt who allow you to take that letter off ah, guys do you see he just said he just said that we took it off because it's easier to memorize so you play with the word of your God so you can memorize it so Allah he did not go do good job we fix him we fix Allah words because it's hard to say BSM. We say BSM. We fix Allah to Allah. Allah is an idiot. He make it hard for us. Same time, Mr. Uh, Muslim, you're a prophet. He said that Allah, he sent seven Quran. Can you name them for me? Is all the Quran, the seven Quran, they have 14, 114 chapters? No. And we gave you example, Ibn Mas'ud. You have 113. Where is the seventh Quran? I want the seventh Quran. What happened to the seventh Quran? The Quran is preserved, right? Okay. Where are they? Can you give me the uh, seven Quran? Do you have a website have the seven Quran uh, Muslim prince? Where are the seven Quran? Are you there? Isn't it Allah here preserve the Quran? Okay, we should have seven Quran equal to each other. Where are they? Where are you, Mr. Numbers? We should have seven Quran. All of them have the same equal numbers. Correct, guys? Because this is a miracle. Look at this, guys. I mean, look at this stupidity. Guys, look, look at this. Look at this. Uh, Muslim, I'm not trying to insult you, but this is stupid of you to say. Guys, look at this. He just admitted that Muhammad, he kept asking for seven Quran. So Allah revealed it. But after Muhammad death, Abu Bakr kept only one Quran. <laughs> so why you say to us the Quran is preserved? Allah gave you seven, you destroy six. Who gave you authority? If Muhammad asked for seven, that's mean there is seven is needed. Who is Abu Bakr to destroy seven Quran? Let me take a snapshot of this. I'm going to post it. In Skype, in, in, uh, in Facebook. <laughs> so you are looking after numbers and you have six books are gone and you have only one left. There's only one Quran. No, you just said Allah He sent him seven Quran. What do you mean there's only one? And you know what do you mean your prophet he keep asking for more Quran? I mean, how stupid that if your prophet says that my people are not capable of doing it, that's mean the seven Quran is needed. Read it carefully. Muhammad he says, My people are not capable of doing it. That's why he keep asking for more Quran. My people, do you see it? Why they're not capable? Because they are stupid, supposedly, according to him. He knew what kind of people they would follow him. 
Yeah, he keep begging. Okay, guys, he keep bargaining and uh, uh, begging for it. Why? And why Allah agree? Is that a bazaar? Is your prophet buying hummus? This is the book of God. Allah, he sent you seven books. Who are you to destroy them? And which one of them you like, you keep? Which one? This one you kept? <laughs> Who make decision to destroy six and to keep one? Who is the one who gave you authority? So you are busy with the numbers, which is false and stupid. If Muhammad he says, my people are not capable of doing it, that means those books are needed. Ah, Allah was nice to Muhammad, guys. Allah was nice to Muhammad. So if Muhammad asks for eight Quran, he will give him. It's like a, it's like, <laughs> it's like a tomato. <laughs> No problem. Allah was nice. Let, let me let me take a snapshot of this one. I'm going to pause this. Unbelievable. You guys, you should take a snapshot of those. And if you are downloading my videos, you know what? Let us let us uh, let us uh, record this on the screen so people will see what we are talking about. But Allah was nice to Muhammad. But these seven Quran were not for all mankind. It was just for a short period. Those seven Quran were used because because in heaven three there is only one Quran. <laughs> Not all for mankind, brother. Why? <laughs> Muhammad says, "My people, my people," which means my followers. What do you mean, not all mankind? <clears throat> only some mankind. What is that? The zoo. Look how silly you are going after a brother number 57 brother we add number two and then we add number three and when we divide them and one to seven brother and then we come with the number of in the even and odd very silly cult this is what happened when you are desperately bankrupt desperately bankrupt Bankrupt cult. And now we don't have them. And you admitted that Abu Bakr destroyed them all. Abu Bakr is your God. Zakir Naik, don't repeat, otherwise I will ban you. Come on. I saw it once, first time, second time. <clears throat> So as you see here, the Muslims admitted that their Quran is gone. It's a disaster if you say, I, Allah, he gave Muhammad seven Quran and we destroy six. And when you say to us that those are not given to all mankind, that is even making it more stupid. And where Muhammad, he says, this is not all for mankind. And what do you get with, with this fabrication? Just to give an answer, just to throw an answer at us. As you see, he is saying, my people not capable of doing it. And Allah, he gave him another. And here, by the way, what kind of Allah, he do not know that his people are not capable. Why Muhammad need to ask Allah for more and more? I mean, is that a, is that a bazaar in India? You say to him, now, come on, man, give me one more, uh, more, one more uh, cucumber. It's not enough for my salad. My people cannot make salad with those cucumber. We need more. Give me one more. He gave him one more. Come on, man. Give me one more. My people cannot make a salad with one cucumber, two cucumber. Give me two, one more. And then he gave him more. Don't Allah knew that he needs seven? What about, okay, I give you seven. What is this? The angel come back and says, okay, Allah agreed to give you one more Quran. Oh, I, I, I ask Allah for burden? Because my people are not capable. What is this? I thought Allah is all knowledgeable. How this happened? <clears throat> so 
so big news about too much like uh, uh, noise sorry about the Quran is being preserved but the Quran is stupid and all the proof showing us that Muslims destroy their by on their hands the Quran according to them do you but you have to agree with me that there's only one Quran in the heaven not seven you see this is stupid of you to say that there's only one Quran in heaven there's no heaven of Allah and there's no Quran in heaven prove it I mean you have to agree with me as if we saw it <laughs> secondly if there's only one Quran in heaven that's mean the sixth Quran additional Quran which Allah he sent is fabricated because there are not Quran Correct, guys. As long as there's only one, so Allah was sending him what? Fake copies? Counterfeit? He was fooling Muhammad that he gave him additional Quran. There's only one Quran, brother, in heaven. You have to agree with me. Yeah, we agree together, brother. We went there together and we saw it there. And by the way, the Quran in heaven, according to your prophet, Allah, he put it between the eyebrows of the angel Israfil. Is that correct? True story, brother. And the frame of the tablet of Allah, which is very big, brother, is uh, between the eyes of Israfil and uh, decorated by uh, rubies. Stupid cult. What do you mean, what? Isn't it Allah? He put his tablet between the eyes of Israfil, which means Israfil, if he tried to read it, he would have a cross eyes. <laughs> so Allah was giving Quran to Muhammad, according to you, fake Quran, because the only true Quran is one. The rest is what? But Allah was changing, playing games. No, I, I will not show you. You speak Arabic, search for it. Type in Google right now. Allah al Mahfuz Baina Ainay Israfil. Let me teach you as you speak Arabic. Don't play dumb. And by the way, what he just said, this is very important because it's proved to us that Muhammad is a false prophet because if he just admitted that the true Quran is the one written in the heaven, that means the additional six Quran was given to Muhammad are a counterfeit and they are fake. Which means Allah was lying to Muhammad. Muhammad keep asking for more Quran and Allah gave him nothing. You believe it? <laughs> what Allah gave him? Fake Quran. Muhammad asked for more Quran. Muhammad he received fake Quran. Because only there's only one Quran, brother. This is what Muslim Prince he said. What a stupid cult. But anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. They are just made up by Allah. Guys, do you did you see this? I mean, is this guy taking a hashish? He just said they are made up. Allah sent Muhammad seven Quran made up. <laughs> I need to uh, frame this. Uh, I'm going to frame this and put it in my living room. They are just made up by Allah on that moment to recite some verses in different ways. <laughs> Brother, the one Allah He made, are they odd or even, brother? Those are made up by Allah. Are they odd or even, brother? If we calculate one plus seven and then we say two hundred plus three, brother, are we going to have even or odd, brother? You can tell that Islam is an odd religion. It's a stupid cult, my friend. And you try desperately trying to defend, but it doesn't work. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. And uh, 
our advice today it was about not to work in those countries stay home better for you stay poor stay poor in your home with honor and dignity because anyway you will stay still poor if you go to those countries but you will lose your dignity and they will humiliate you you will be raped you will be humiliated you will be enslaved for nothing working as a maid in the Middle East will not make you rich and you are going to be raped you will be tortured you will be humiliated and they can accuse you with anything anytime they wish and destroy your future and you have kids waiting for you back home or a family stay home with honor work as a farmer grow some chickens be free person when a human being loses a freedom there's nothing else to lose freedom is the most priceless gift was given to us by God when you go to those Middle Eastern countries to work there you are giving up your freedom you are enslaving yourself so blame only yourself for becoming a slave of somebody you went there by your own even you paid money to go there and I did my duty to share with you the truth and the truth will set you free so i want to say guys thank you very much for being here may the lord bless you feel free to download the video after we finish we will not keep it for long as you know thank you and take care bye, -bye.